I really need to put on my Steam Deck that, you know, a camera button to turn the camera on and off. I have one for muting desktop audio for some reason. Sorry, I'm just actually fixing the Stream Deck because it's not up right. There we go. Um, but I don't have one for actually muting the microphone, which I really should have. Desktop audio. Don't have one for turning on or off the camera, which again, I really should have at this point, to be frank. Uh, anyway, hi everyone and welcome in to today's live stream. We'll be working on our game engine in this video and um, proceeding working on a renderer. And I might actually do something really stupid. I'm really tempted to start working on two renderers. Uh, so we have the OpenGL one and I want to work on a DirectX one as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know that's not the smartest choice to make. And I also realize that it's going to require probably a lot of reorganization of the folders so that things don't get confusing. For example, um, I'd be using different input controllers for each, even though, or I could be using different input, input controllers for each, even though it's really, hey, the same keyboard and mouse, the same controller, the same uh, joystick or HOTUS. Um, but I... I and that actually might be the reason I'm going to hold off is I don't know enough about DirectX yet to know if I can use the same input controller for both OpenGL and DirectX that is, or if I have to uh, make my own. I want to do a little bit more research actually probably before we do that. So we probably won't do that today. Um, or, you know, if I can, if it has to be different sort of setups for each, if I can convert one, sorry, I'm just moving the mic because I can hear my own voice sounding a bit weird. Um, if I can convert, or if I can set one up so that's polymorphic in nature, uh, again, I have to do a bit more research before I can even consider doing, uh, any of that. Um, but yeah, no, so that's what we'll be doing today. Uh, let me get my goals up for what we're actually going to be doing really quickly. Sorry, it is on the other window, thus why I'm looked away as I am. Wow, I still have the Lambda interview stuff open. Hey, there are the goals for today. I'm actually just going to go ahead and plop those up on the screen when we um, switch over in a moment. So we're going to reorganize our project. I'm going to do a review of my code, just make sure I've hit all the things I wanted to hit already, hit all the to-dos. Uh, we're going to finish up with our basic shader setup that we started on. We'll build a 2D renderer system, so a sprite renderer. Um, and I kind of want to determine what's going on with my mouse position code. It's, um, off on uh, the Y axis. I can get it on the X axis, but I cannot get it for some reason on the Y axis. Correct. Um, that is more of a stretch goal, I guess, for what we're doing. Um, as always, the series, this video, the tutorial series, everything is brought to you by Patreon sponsors. And you too can help the channel out. And all you have to do is hit that like button below. It really does help this channel out. And if you want to take your support a bit further, you want to make sure you're here when the tutorials are released. You get announcements for these live streams. You know, there's that subscribe button. If you really want to make sure you get the information because you don't get the alerts automatically, there is also the notify bell. So if you want to help out, that's all you need to do. But if you do want to take your support a bit further, and you want to have access to some of the projects, so all the Unreal projects we do on YouTube, or access to videos, the tutorials, that is, because I can't give you early access to live streams, um, that you do get private live streams for other things related to coding. Oh, dear God, I just heard how that sounded. I am clearly not fully awake. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, if you... Um, Want to take your support a bit further, get access to the early tutorials, private live streams around programming, game dev, game reviews, things like that. When I say game reviews, I don't mean me reviewing random games. I mean games you're working on. Um, you know, then consider becoming a Patreon sponsor. All right. Sorry for the long introduction and for the rambling there. Welcome in, Sam. How are you doing today, my friend? And for those of you watching the live stream and who can't see the chat, sorry, I'm just grabbing a monster that I just bought. Um, this is good Sam, not original flavor Sam. 
And yes, they are still being dichotomized by Good Sam and Original Flavor. Take from that what you will. Also, uh, while you're answering, let me just go ahead and do our little intro. Okay, uh, camera didn't come back on like it should have. <laughs> it's my logo. <laughs> oh, that was a bit nerve wracking. All right. Um, oh, that's not gonna fit on the screen, is it? Sorry, I'm just trying to. Um. Oh, it's hidden, that's why. I was like, it's not fitting on the screen. It's not even showing up. It's because it's hidden. All right. Um, right. I'm just going to put mouse position for that last one because yikes. Uh, Boink. Ouse position. Less than ouse position. Okay, there we go. I think those are fair enough goals for what we want to do today. So, let me just close out the school things I have open and open this monster because I need the energy. Sorry, that was really loud, probably. All right. So, first thing we're going to do is um, reorganize the project. Let me get my notes on what I want to do for that up. Okay, I think I just want to move some folders around. So that makes a bit more sense to me. Now, I'm sighing and hemming and hawing now because I'm just thinking about this input one, uh, which is technically linked to our controller, but I'm not entirely sure that I, um, that I want to leave it that way. All right, so I do want to move some th things into the graphics folder. I want to move our renderer in there. And, um... Just, just give me a second to look at my notes on what I, how I wanted to do this. I want to move the shader. The shader, I know, I just want to move directly into graphics as is. And yeah, that's going to break some stuff. I need to, um... There's one of the breaks. So that's now going to be in graphics shader. Um, I should get some other errors too. We're just going to those down really quickly. Yep. Uh, can't open. Uh, all right. So this is now one subfolder farther away. And that is also one subfolder farther away. Now I'm pretty sure if I try to run this, I'm still going to have problems. In fact, I know I will. So let's just go into here. Find where we're loading our shaders. And just update this to load in the correct shaders. All right. So that one is fairly simply uh, done by moving that folder there. Um, right, uh, the renderer should also really be in there, and we're just going to go ahead and drop that into graphics as well. I'm going to wait for the other errors to actually pop up. Really? Right. Do we actually even put anything in here? Oh, yeah, we're, our buffers. We're working on our buffers. That's where we left off. All right, um, and we haven't called them up yet. That's why. Okay, so we shouldn't have any errors there yet. Let's see, anything else I want to move around? We have our logging system. That stays where it's at. We haven't done anything there. Physics we haven't touched yet. I um, think we did everything we want to do there. 
our log system, which I really should put on get ignore, our input system. Yeah, I think we don't have anything in AI animations yet. Yeah, no. So that is, well, huh, goal one was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Okay, well, at least something is going to plan being easy. That is a first for one of these streams, right? All right, so I want to do a review of what we have already. I'm just actually going to close everything out for this, not pin it. All right. Um, all right, since we're working on these, we'll take care of these later. Did we actually finish our shader completely? So let's start with our shader. And um, go through it piece by piece, make sure everything is in there that we want now. Just looking at the includes, just, you yeah, know, we can just use GLW. We don't need to have our graphics loader. Did I actually create a graphics loader? Like, or is that something on my list of things to do that I just forgot that I want to do? Um, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Ah, there's a graphics loader. I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure there's a there's this thing I called graphics loader. All right. Um. So shaders. We have our constructor constructor for the vertex path, the fragment path. We have our shader ID. We have our pointers for our two shader types. We have our set uniform matrices. Uh, one one for int versus float. Our vec two. Our vec three versions. Our vec four and our matrix version um, we're gonna optimize this apparently I don't know much to do for that really is about now do we even use IO stream anymore yeah I don't think we need it uh Oh no, we still have that in there. Oh, that's in the, hang on. That's not what I wanted. I want the current document, thank you. Uh, and I wanted uh, a C out. Okay, yeah, I don't think we need that header anymore so we can get rid of that. So we did our logging method last time. All right, let's go through the actual code in here. Just make sure there's no updates I want to make to it. Sorry, I am getting my notes on this open. Uh, okay, I did do that finally. I don't remember when I did that, but apparently I did. Destructor. All right, so we're creating our shader program. Sorry, I'm just gonna get my notes open on this topic really quickly. If I can figure out which window uh, I put things in. It's not in the same window as I have um, a steam in. Okay, no, it, that's on Lambda. I don't care about Lambda right now. Ah, here we are. No, that's just a stack overflow on vertex arrays. Oh, where did I put this? Thing on different container types. I think I closed the window of my six. So give me one second to get this back up. G L F W uh, renderer. Sorry, I just want the one I had from uh, from uh, G L F W open because it had all the list of all the functions. Do, 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 do. Well, that is the actual uh, notes I have for Vulcan. And that is GFLW's forum. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm looking for. So I was trying to get this. Uh, back open so I can actually reference what I need to reference. Sorry about that. 
Um, and I'm going to post that in the chat so people actually have what I'm looking at or where I'll be working from and moving document or reading from and using to actually understand what's going on here. All right. Uh, wait, is that the right one actually? Because I'm looking for program and create program. Or, sorry, I'm looking for GL create program. No, that is not the right document. Give me a second. Okay, so this is the quick starter guide, which is not what I'm referring to. I'm just going to bring that up on the screen so you can see it before I post the link in the chat. There is the link for that one. That is something useful, by the way. It is what I was using a few streams back, if you remember. Um, okay, that is something that we're going to be talking about later today. I'm not sure if I have it open already. I don't, so I'm going to move it to the correct spot on my list. Oh, I do. Actually, I lied. <clears throat> I cannot actually find the thing I'm looking for. optimization material that we can look at later. I will find this later. I'm just going to continue on with what we're doing and um, yeah, we'll go from there. So let me just get my notes back up. Um, right. So those are all the same. File path, file path. Yep. Okay. Don't think I've made any changes in here. Nope. Do want to make a change to our shaders. We are going to go to 450 on uh, our version. We're going to do the same in both shaders. I know that was a to do. And yeah, we don't have to change much of anything on that so far. Um, let's get rid of this stuff. Okay, honestly, I think that was what I wanted to review. It's just that uh, the things in here. Might want to actually move. Um, hmm. Where is it? There was something I was looking at in here. I was like, I might want to actually move this to our input class. Ah, this, this poll events. And we might want to, when do we actually call update? I think we call update from main. Window clear. Yeah, we call update from main. So I... I'll think about that one because I'm not entirely sure if I want to um, have two things being called that regularly on that while loop, but we're going to need something about that eventually have a sort of central based tick system that our system will use to, well, for timers, for working out when to actually queue things up. Um, Yeah, I'm just not sure if um, how I want to tackle that. So we're going to leave it here for now. I'm just going to leave a note to myself about it, though. Um,
Okay, so we'll have to consider the, cons uh, the impact that might have on a DirectX controller. Okay. So today, what I want you to do is build this renderer. Renderer. Um, which means we have to finish our shaders out. So uh, I'm gonna disclose the shader code. I think I, we actually have finished the shaders out based on what I just saw. Um, we just get the shaders back open. Yeah, no, we finished it out. Okay, cool. We have our shaders done. Uh, I don't mean shaders on, I mean buffers, because I can tell we only have two of three that I want. Um, so let me just update the text there to actually say, uh, finish buffers. Uh, should not have said shaders. There's a reason I didn't open the buffers, is I can see they're not done yet. Because I want three, as I mentioned, in total. So let's do our index buffer, our vertex buffer. And actually, I'm just going to move the vertex to the start here. So it should go vertex to index to our um, uh, or to our uh, VAO or our VA. It becomes an O when we instantiate it. Um, right, that is wrong. So as you remember, I was struggling trying to figure out how to actually do this. This actually is all of this needs to be fixed. Like there are mistakes throughout this. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming that those mistakes are going to be here because we copied and pasted this over to do that. Yeah, no, the mistakes are here too. Right. Also, I had a calculation that I now need to find again for stride. Um, I don't remember which of these tabs had it in it. Ah, here's the uh, tab I was looking for earlier. So this is the one that I wanted to share with you guys. Let me just get um, YouTube back up on screen. So that's the uh, other document we're using. But before we do that, I am gonna find the stride thing. Cause it was the first thing I saw that actually mentioned stride. If I have closed this tab, I'll be really sad. Ah, no, we're gonna leave our shrite at zero. That's so I was right about the shrite thing. We don't have to do any calculations, at least not with the version we currently have set up. But we do have mistakes in in our um, in our vertex um, buffer. I was gonna say vertex array. That's the part we're gonna do later today. So um, all right, our data is float. I was right about that because it's the actual values from our matrices. What I'm trying to figure out is how to explain the next bit of this is what we need to do is we need to have three arguments we're passing in. And what we're going to be looking at is the differences between, you know, sorry, I'm just putting up the sort of examples. Okay, so each of these is a valid thing we could be passing into here as a data type. You know, we have a vec2, a vec3, a vec4, right? Well, you know, if it, it, it can, we, if we can pass all these in, we need some way to tell them apart or some way for the system to parse the data. So either we can create overloads of different types, which, hey, great use of C++, we can go ahead and do that. We could, um, I'm just trying to think what else we could do actually now. We could pass in an argument that parses the data. So, you know, if we say, hey, we are looking for vec2s and we pass in four floats, 
it's going to read it as a vec2 vec2. Of course, this would cause a problem. Um, we shouldn't be passing in different sizes, in other words, if we do that. Hmm. I know there are other methods. I've seen them talked about. Uh, what I want to do is I want to parse the data, say where to break it. And the, yeah, the data is going to be um, the data is going to be float. Like I said, sorry, I'm just reorganizing my thoughts and um, count will be how many of the particular elements are passing in. So that's only one vec four. We might be passing in you know, three of them. And we are saying, hey, or let's say these are vec2, we're passing in vec2s, we're passing in a set of vec2s that looks like this, and we're saying, hey, we're passing in eight. It's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, I meant to say six, sorry, uh, six. I thought I had to paste that four times. I meant to paste it four times for that. Okay, and then that would be eight. So seven, eight. Um, so count is the number of things that we're actually, how many groups are passing in? We're passing in six groups. How do we split this into six is we parse it by sets of two. So this would be a count of six with a delimiter of two. And I'm not, <clears throat> excuse me, not sure if I want to call it delimiter or not, now that I've actually set a name for it. Hmm. Um, the joys of thinking about how I want to name things. Also, I, I'm thinking about how we're building this. And the way in which I want to read it is, I want to read it as, what are we passing in? How much of it are we passing in? Piazzing in. Um, and once they do, I'm going to call it delimiter for now. Uh, delimiter. Um, and what's the delimiter of it? So with that in mind, we're just going to change the order a bit. We're going to go, we're passing in this first. How many we're passing in is this? And then our last bit is going to be GL uh, size I, because it's an integer. We don't really need to, yeah. And um, you know what? I'm going to call it length instead of delimiter length. What is the length of the thing we're passing in? So it's two. Again, one, two, three, four, that sort of setup. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, let me just get rid of this, which means we need to copy this bit over now. Go over here and clean this up. Let's get rid of that G. Right. Um, so uh, count is still count. Yep. Um, I was right about this, so we want to. What this is doing is we're generating a buffer and assigning uh, an ID to the buffer. Uh, here we're just saying we want. We're just saying we want an array of data. Sorry, I'm checking the notes over there to make sure I'm reading the right ones. This one we have to redo. So again, what sort of buffer we're looking at? Just a an array of data. Um, and this is where it gets a bit different. So let me just get the notes on this one back up on my screen. Uh, ba -ba -bum. Sorry for you losing the window there for a moment. <clears throat> so this is the actual documentation for it. Ooh, maybe we want to... I might want to reorganize the constructor again. I want maybe we want to follow this setup a bit. Um, now that makes no sense. What I just said, because uh, I just realized there. No, no, there is a cons void data GL buffer. Yeah, it's right there. Um,
Right, so that would go length. Hang on, let me get that document back open. I'm just do it this way. So that would go, uh, they call it size, huh? So they call it here, size. Okay, we're gonna call it size too. Okay, so we'll change uh, length to size. And notice that was a GL size pointer. And length will become size here as well. Data we had named the same way. Um, count isn't in there, so we don't need to worry about that. So, um, You know what, we're gonna do it that way because it just makes more sense to me than what I did in my tests where I had data last and I was just really confused most of the time. Um, all right, so it isn't count we're doing here. It is the size of a float, it's the size of the data, but what we don't know is actually, well, the actual size of the data is. So we're storing that in groups of whatever we're passing in as size, as our length. Um, right, yeah, float is right, data. Uh, so all we're doing is specifying the data type for the buffer and its use. Now, remember earlier I said we can have overloads, but the reason why we're not doing that is we have this GL buffer thing. Um, yeah, then this just needs to be copied down here without the uh, data. Uh, the static draw. I was going to say data draw for some reason. Okay, um, I'm going to leave that note into myself just in case. And we do need to actually unbind the buffer after doing this. So whenever we bind a buffer, we want to unbind it. And we're just going to unbind this data array. Okay. Uh, this is actually so easy. Like, it's... Uh, we're gonna take that line and just paste it here. Okay, uh, so that unbinds our buffer. I'm also gonna just take that and put that up here as well. All right, so we have our buffer unbound. Um, we will need to probably update this down the road very shortly, but for now it's fine. Um, that brings us to our index buffer. Uh, and just before we go over to our index buffer, I'm gonna copy this line. And uh, we're just gonna start down here in case I want to change anything up. Really useful, computer, really. Thank you. I, I'm so appreciative of that response. Um, All right, I have in my notes that we're gonna run into an issue if we use um, uh, an unsigned 64-bit integer. Um, just making a quick, taking a quick look at my notes. And for some reason, I have both in my pseudocode. Um, right. I'm gonna leave this at 64, because that's what I have already. Uh, I wanna add in one inline function, because because these members are private. I want, actually, I wanna add in two. Um, it'll be glu int six, actually we'll do glu int get buffer name. Actually, we're gonna redo this as buffer ID. It's a number, it's an ID. Uh, so get buffer ID. Take no arguments, const return buffer ID. And of course we're gonna do inline and it's GL and that's GL unsigned integer 64 bit. Get count, no arguments pass in and we're just going to return our count. Okay. Um, Everything else in here looks right. So that just hopefully means we have this one fairly much done. 
this now should be index ID instead of index name or buffer ID. Also, did we do that here? We called the buffer name. Yeah, we're just gonna call it buffer ID here as well. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, so again, first one, yep, that's the same. Um, Jesus. Oh yeah, no, count makes sense here. So what we're doing is, so imagine if we're taking all of this stuff, everything in our vertex and storing it here as something to be queued up. It's the number of whatever we're passing in. So yeah, that makes sense to me that that is that way. Uh, yeah, that's the same. That's right. And again, we need to unbind any buffers that we do. So it's gonna be bind buffer gl element array buffer. And again, zero unbinds it. And hey, you know how easy the rest of the to do down there is? Boing, right. Um, Jesus, that was all we had for those uh, shaders. Cool. I thought I had more to do there. Oh, wait, we still have the third shader. To, sorry, I keep saying shader. Buffer. We have the third buffer to make. And that is going to be our ver VAO, vertex array buffer. Uh, o in this case stands for object. It's going to be what our VAO is. All right. Um,. I also just realized something. I haven't put my, uh, oh, I have, okay. What I haven't done is what this particular method does. Um, let me just grab one of these things. That was not what I meant to grab. Okay, so uh, this header contains the index buffer functions. How descriptive. And we'll do the same here. This header contains the vertex buffer. All right, and now we need a new header. And this will be our Vertex, sorry, I'm trying to look around the uh, microphone to actually see it. Um, our vertex array. Okay. Let me just drop that in here. Um, do, 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 vertex array. I also need to drop that in there. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'll pull that out in a moment. We're going to do our namespace. And it's Neuron Engine Graphics. Hopefully I haven't saw anything wrong in there. This class will be our Vertex Array. All right, and let me just get my usual lovely thingamajiggers out. I'm weird like how when I like uh, and do the, in that I do this. I can't speak well today, clearly. Speaking is not a strong suit today. Give me a second, actually. I just, I'm, I'm gonna just take a sip of this, kill the camera. And see if I can't wake myself up with a little bit of um, bad habit. So our constructor, it's gonna be fairly simple. We'll have a default constructor and we'll have a default destructor. Um, why is my neighbor painting in the rain? I will question that one later. Um, we're gonna to need to have an ID for the array. We're gonna to need to store the buffers. Um, we're going to need to pass and get the buffers, bind them, add them, 
We're gonna need a system for queuing them up in the renderer. So probably just gonna pass whatever container we use in this case over to the renderer. And because I haven't really decided on a container based system yet, which system we're gonna be using, if we're gonna make a bespoke one, create a wrapper for one, um, because I know from reading just comments about memory handlement in GLF, GLFW that GLFW prefers contiguous storage of memory, which means in terms of our options for um, containers in C++, that limits us to um, three options, one of which is unacceptable, so that's really two options. And the unacceptable one is... <laughs> <laughs> um, saving a file and then loading the file back in because if you think about how um, get ch works is it it points to a spot in the memory data when you call it it reads that spot and then moves to the next spot in memory um, so we can't use that technically the thing we talked about in terms of reading in files that we created before we created our logging system could also work in that regard but again uh, yeah, now, uh, the other option is, um, creating dynamic arrays. And when I say creating dynamic arrays, I don't mean the traditional standard library sense of it. And at that point, if we're doing that, I just, I'm going to create my own container class. Um, not something I'm thinking about doing right now, not something I'm considering. So let's avoid that one. And that leaves us with the other option of using vectors. So we'll probably go ahead and use vectors. Now, uh, for anyone not familiar, we have things like map, list, DQ, uh, so double-ended Q, um, T array is C++, or not C++, Unreal. Um, I know there's another common container besides uh, lists and uh, DQs and the ones I've already mentioned. Um, yeah, we don't need those, um, because they're not contiguous and apparently GLFW works better with contiguous storage. Um, there is something else in that. Sorry, I haven't lit off the cigarette yet. Okay, now I have. There was something else in that that I wanted to raise. Um, contiguous storage, profiling, we won't talk about that for a bit because I'm nowhere near ready to even think about that. Um, 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 man, talk about a brain fart. I really can't remember what it was going to be. Um, contiguous storage in memory. Making my own containers. I, this thing gonna bug me. I, um, genuinely don't remember. Genuinely, and it's it's irksome. I'm I'm just sorry. I'm just staring at uh, a document to see if it's refreshing my memory, and it isn't. All right. Um. So while I try to struggle to remember what I was thinking about. What we're gonna do is not go down so many lines and uh, pray the microphone doesn't block my view too much for this next bit. Um, is we're gonna create our buffers. We have our primary constructor as usual. So primary constructor. And that will be just, you know, vertex array, no arguments passed in. And then we're gonna have our default uh, destructor. I guess our primary constructor is also our default one which will be vertex array, no arguments. Okay, so for our attributes, we need to have an ID, and this needs to be an unsigned uh, integer. Now, in theory, we could store this as just a regular uh, int, hell, we could store it, we can create our own int class and store it there. Uh, GLW doesn't give a crap how we store it, but, what it does give a crap is what we pass to it. And for that reason, and to make things a little bit more performant, instead of having have it convert over, instead of casting, 
instead of any other number of options we're just going to use our gl uh, library for this now we're going to need to include to get this to work our header then for that and so what we're going to do is include and i think it's two folders back um yeah graphics loader our graphics loader that way we get access to our gl functions and methodologies and our attributes so we're going to use gl unsigned integer and this will be array id and because i always like assigning things at the start and then we're going to create a vertex to uh hold all the buffers so these are the buffers that we're queuing up to actually render so we need a way to store that so we need to do another include And we are going to end up using um, vector, as I mentioned earlier. Okay. And so uh, our vector will be std vector, if I could spell. And it will be of vertex buffers, which we also need to actually include. Jesus Christ. Uh, give me a second. Sorry, it was a bit windier with my window open than I thought it was going to be. Um, so uh, what did I say? We need to include our vertex buffers. So uh, include, and there's our vertex buffer. Okay. So I think I said earlier the index buffer store anything. It's actually this is storing the vertex buffer. Sorry about that. I got it backwards on where things were being stored in. but. And this is just our list of buffers. So we're going to call this buffers. I'm not going to initialize it to anything. For our methodology, we are going to do a add buffer. So add buffer, which we need to know which vertex buffer. No, not right, sorry. Vertex buffer as a pointer we're adding in. And um, I think that might be it we need for that one. We need to bind this buffer. And unbind it. And then we're going to do an inline uh, std vector for the return of our vertex buffer pointers. So it's going to be called get, not bet, buffers. Const preturn, really, return. And we're going to return our buffers off of this. Okay. Right. I think that's all we need for this one. What we also do need is an implementation file, so our C++ file. So let's go ahead and create that the proper way. Go into our source here. Add new item. And before I actually do that, let me turn the camera back on. All right, so for our new item, what we're going to do is this will be our vertex array. Sorry, I actually can't tell if I, how I spelled that, so I'm just gonna retype it and pray I got it right and look over at the stream window. It's too small for me to read there. Let's hope I named this right. Okay. So, of course, we need to include the header for this. And that is our vertex array. And we're using our namespace. Okay, there we go. So our constructor, let me just copy over this bit for now. We can delete stuff. Our constructor is going to need to construct our um, vertex array, our VAO. So to do that, there is a method, a macro we're going to call up called GL gen for generate vertex arrays we're going to put it uh, the first one 
and we're going to pass in for that uh, pointer that wants there a reference to our array ID. So we're assigning it an ID at this point. And our destructor, well, OK. We'll come back to our destructor, even though I know what it's going to be. I, I don't think I can explain it well without showing what comes after. And we're going to do these three to demonstrate that. All right, so let's just paste those in there. Grab our scope, paste the scope in. And as usual, okay, there we go. So when we um, add a buffer, we're gonna bind it. So we're gonna call this bind method up. There we go. And then we're gonna take the buffer and we're gonna also bind the buffer. Then we're gonna do GL, and then we want to enable the vertex array, or attrib, attribute, array. There we go. Um, index, what index do we want? I think we're actually gonna need to pass that in. So that was GL unsigned int. We'll call that index. Uh, let's just go ahead and put that in here as well, I guess. Okay, and then we'll do index here. So we'll have to pass in the index. And then we need to do GL vertex. Um, okay, sorry, let me get that. GLW thing open. I just minimized it by mistake when I did something. Uh, but, but, but that's the wrong one. I really should. I had to cut the GLW, GLW stuff next to each other. Um, I think I was just in the right document. Uh, GL vertex. Uh, this configures V8 bound VAO. Uh, it's not set layout. It's not. Oh, I need to do that in the uh, shaders. That's the data layout element. Um, vertex attribute attrib pointer. Okay, so it's GL vertex attrib pointer. Okay, so we need an index, which will just pass an index. We need our size, and that is the component size. So we're gonna call up the buffer for that and get, okay. Let's go back to our vertex buffer. Do we do that here, but we didn't do it. Okay, so we're gonna wanna do the same thing we did here in our, I thought we did that. Okay, apparently we didn't. So uh, it's gonna be inline and it's GL um, you went 64 get count const and also the U and unsigned is lowercase. Um, return and then it is count again actually I'm also gonna do an inline uh, we want to get the buffer ID as well so get what did I actually name it in the index buffer get buffer ID get buffer ID const that C should be lowercase case return and then it's buffer ID, I really cannot see anything over this. There we go. <laughs> I can just realize after I finish, I can just scroll down. All right, so now what we wanna do is get 
count. Okay, and then we want our type. Um, sorry, I'm just looking back at my notes on on this one. Oh, uh, so type um, is is um, GL float. Okay, why are you clipping that? GL enum type. Okay, give me a second. Um, GL enum type. Sorry, I doesn't remember the page from before. It's this thing. So we're looking for the uh, common enum name. Uh, float, 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 float. Am I just blind? Oh, so it's the bottom. GL underscore float, all capitals. Okay. Will you accept that? You will accept that, it appears. Okay, cool. Um, can, can you give back to giving me the rest of the arguments? Thank you. Uh, normalized, I think that's zero. Stride, we don't need to worry about. And then we'll pass in null pointer for null pointer for the last one. Okay. And then, of course, now we need to unbind the buffer and unbind here. Now, think about it like a, a sandwich almost. You know, this is the bread. This is where the, the top fixing is. We don't want to then do unbind to put the bread here and then buffer unbind buffer because we've already unbound here we need to unbind the buffer first thing again thinking about it like a sandwich is at least what made sense to me when i was going over this last couple of days okay so that's all we're doing for binding and then for unbinding what we're going to do is we're just going to call up um our gl bind um vertex array and we're going to pass in our array ID that we assigned earlier in the constructor. And um, I was mistaken earlier about what I said. And to unbind, all we're going to do is take this again. And just like with our other binds, we're going to bind it to zero, which is saying bind it to nothing. We're unbinding it. Right. How do I explain this in a way that's going to make sense? When we're adding a buffer, we're adding to our um, vertex, our vector that we've created, right? That's what's happening here. We're adding to it. Here, what we're going to do is we want to delete it, but we want to make sure we delete everything in there one by one, that everything gets deleted. So for good memory management. And to do that, we're going to iterate through the buffer and delete the individual elements. So we're going to do a for size t i equals zero. i is less than the number of um, didn't I name it buffers? Also, I swear I'm here in my gardener. Um, it's buffers, by the way. Sorry. Yeah, that's his laugh. Yeah, he's the son of my neighbor. Um, so it makes sense that I'm hearing him. I just couldn't see any of them outside. All right, so we have that. And all we're going to do, and just because this is a one-line thing, I'm not going to worry about the brackets, is we're going to delete the buffers at that index. Okay. I think I think that covers, covers what I wanted to do for this bit, I think. We won't know for a bit until we actually test this out. Hey, hey, Adrian and Sam and Chica. Sorry for the delay in response. I was uh, a bit distracted by reading the documentation. How are you guys all doing today? And welcome on in. All right. Um, sorry. I'm just going to just reshuffle on the chair a bit. <sighs> okay. Um... All right, let's go back to our actual shaders. Now we're gonna just restructure these a bit. Um, 
so our basic vertex, um, we have color. We have our, I'm in frag, that's really bad. Um, vertex is what I wanted, not our fragment shader. Okay, so um, I've already done this to do. We're in GL 4 point and 4 now. Cool. Um, right. Do, do, do. We aren't loading in textures yet. So uh, we're going to load in colors for now until we can get textures. And hell, we might even want to say color override anyway. Um, or color overlay or what have you. So we're going to create a new um, uh, vec for for layout and that will be um give me a second because this one is actually case sensitive as i found out the fun way um basic shader vertex open gl vertex shader ba -ba -ba -bum. Multiple attributes. Uh, this is not the right part of OpenGL. Um, what? Okay, I'm not using that website, apparently. <sighs> GL vendor, GL render, GL version, GL shading language version. Nope. Copy buffer, and now it's buffer stuff. That's the enum list. This is a discussion around uh, different types of containers and GL, uh, GLFW and OpenCL. Um, uh, this is my guide for drawing triangles, which we'll be using in a moment. Really, maybe it doesn't matter as much as I thought it did. Oh, the names on here matter. Okay, right, the names up here don't matter as much. Right, uh, so I don't need to be as paranoid. Okay, right. Joys of learning how to do this on the fly. As you can see, I'm sometimes gonna be doing weird things. So it's uh, layout, and we're gonna throw this at location one. And this is gonna be an in, and it's gonna also be a vec four. Now, what I don't get is why if these names don't matter, okay, whatever, I'll, I'll worry about that later. I know it's a, a, it's not actually C++ this is done in, but what have you. Uh, we're gonna store color. And that means that we have two outs that we're passing. Um, now, I think we can get away with doing Hang on. Uh, what did that document say about doing what I'm about to do? I swear I saw something about that. Uh, go back, go back. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. By the way, uh, the document I'm looking at is this. So, yeah. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Again, I'm gonna, I'll paste that directly in the chat for folks to follow along with the documents I am working through. There you go. Um, get instance ID, get vertex ID, uh, get draw ID, limits. Nope. Huh. 
Huh. Okay. That's good to know. Um, but not what I'm looking for. Uh, but, but, but I want to know. Ah, uh, very bottom of the page. Outputs. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so that's a predefined one. So we're going to define our own. So it's still going to be out. Um, I'm going to give it a name in a moment. And we're passing out two vec4s. We're passing out our position and our color. So we'll do um, vec4 position. I have to remember that I need to do it myself. Vec4 and... Um, Color. Sorry, I paused for a minute because I was just thinking about something. We haven't defined this yet, so we need to define what it is. Um, that's what is bugging me. And uh, let me just do a quick check on what that should actually look like. So that's uh, OpenGL um, out attributes layout GLS GLSL. Yep. That's the language I was talking about, GLSL. Um, oh, that's going to be useful when we get to image loader. Sorry, I'll post the link for the part I'm reading on GLSL right now, also in the chat. Um, there you go. Okay, um, explicit uniform locations, model to world matrix. Okay, it looks like, wait, hang on. Layout, out block, data. Atomic counter storage, not what I'm looking for. Buffer block index is implicitly two. Output block one. Okay, hang on. Tessellation information, fragment origin. Uh, right. Uh, okay. Not 100% sure. So we're just going to call this. Um, vert. Out for now. Now we need to read this into our basic as well. So we're going to also, uh, for now, comment that line out. Sorry. Um, right. So instead of reading in just this bit, which of course, the line I just commented out, we want to do in um, Sorry, just give me a moment. I think we should be able to do this. Uh, okay. So we're going to do uh, out will be vert in. Or vert out. In will be vert out. Jesus. Um, which means that here, what we're going to do is we're going to do vert out dot um position okay and color then will become um color okay cool um it will be vert out dot color times intensity which is defined here okay i think that gets us through what we need to do for the shader there
Jesus. Um, right. So um, next we're gonna actually have to define our renderable, our sprite, our 2D projection, what have you. Um, the way to think about it is currently when we draw a box, we're drawing two triangles, right? And when we type that into OpenGL, we go to our main, you can see this actually, hang on. Uh, not in our math test, yeah, it's in here. Um, here, I say three for triangles, and then we're still drawing triangles, but we're drawing six vertices instead of three. But a box, two triangles, has four corners. Well, why are there six vertices? Well, we're gonna use our, our fancy dancy uh, paint thing here. And uh, yeah, let's just go here for a second. This is not gonna be to scale of any sort. Um, actually, I'm just gonna use a brush. We have, how big is that gonna be? Okay, uh, that is fairly tiny. Um, boink, we have a, a vertice there. We have a vertice there. And let's make this a, uh, this sort of triangle. We have a vertice there. So we end up with this uh, really, this triangle here, right? Oh God, isn't that the most pretty drawing you've ever seen? Right, and we draw a second triangle with a vertice there, one there. Actually, I'm gonna do the triangle a different color. We're gonna put a vertice there, so we can see that there's also a black one there. Uh, one there, and one there. And then we end up with our second triangle, which we'll do in orange this time. I didn't use a line, I used a brush, didn't I? Yeah. And so there's triangle two. God, that is such a wonderful line that it issue. All right, and so what's happening is we're drawing, you know, this vertex here and here twice. So instead of one, two, three, four, it is one, two, three, four, five, six. We don't need to draw these two points twice. And that's what we're trying to take care of here. We're trying to make it so that, you know, it's this really, okay, we're drawing four, but it's really, sorry, we're drawing six, but it's really four we end up actually drawing. So we reduce some of that overhead. Now, when we're at this stage, eh, it's not like it's gonna make a huge difference, but when, um, but when you're doing, thousands or hundreds, hundreds or thousands, or hundreds of thousands even, of draw calls, <laughs> it, it adds up. Um, you know, it's like someone going, oh, it's only a couple of bytes, um, and you're calling something up a couple of bytes every, uh, t every tick, every computational tick. Um, those numbers eventually add up, and it adds up rapidly. So we're going to try to avoid that um, by drawing as few as possible. Um, and there are a couple of different ways to approach this, and I, I um, one of them, and I'm going to explore this after the approach I've already sort of looked at, because I found this approach earlier today while trying to find a note on something. Um, let me just find it, because it also has something really, really important in here, and I didn't realize it until I read it. Um, so, oh my god, am I glad I read it. Let me just find it again. Um, it's from... Pretty sure this actually just copied from some something else because I swear I saw this on OpenGL, but it might have been a link from OpenGL to this. So take what I just said with a grain of salt. Um, but we have we have this uh, Vulcan guide that works with OpenGL. Uh, what's really important to notice there is the position uh, stuff they have. We'll be doing ours differently, but what I didn't know was actually where the positions fully were and kind of was guessing based on things I'd seen previously. This confirmed my guess was actually accurate. Um, I got a bit of it wrong, but I was thinking about the storage correctly. So that makes me happy. <laughs> okay. Um, so what we need to do is, um, we need to store this information. And we need to store it in a way that it knows how to create it. 
we also need to store the color that we're going to paint. And now the way colors work is it's every vertex gets the color. Okay. Um, so we need to create a new class for this and I'm tempted to call this our sprite class, but I can see using it for like non sprite things as other 2d things, but 2d tend to be sprites. So now, um, All right. Uh, I don't know. Um, you know what? No, this is going to be, hang on. Okay. This will be our base class. Um, actually, before I do this, I need to look up my naming convention rules. Give me a second. Um, Google Docs. So I can say Google Sheets and it's documents I want. Uh, switch over to this account, please, for my personal account. Uh, uh, math library plan, don't need that. All right, uh, Pascal case, method, headers. Um, mm -hmm. Do, do, do. Um, I swear I wrote something for this. Comments, comment. Uh, utility methods, structures, uh, in the rare case, given private members are underscore member, that a parameter argument for a function, like a setter, uh, a parameter for the appropriate suffix in, uh, okay, I don't hear that. Macros and defines, um, this should be on all caps, private is underscore, except for member structs where it would be inappropriate so transform back to booleans are tagged with b's getter should be called get setter should be set if it's setting a single variable type uh, other functions should be active wording verbose naming is acceptable callback should be snake case or if more oh i didn't follow that one crap uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. all right um so um Parent classes will be tagged with the suffix base. E.g., since this is our first one, renderable 2D, a renderable, two, yeah. Okay, we might have to talk about that convention in just a moment because I'm not happy with how that looks. So uh, that's what I've just added to my little document on naming here. Uh, so this is going to be renderable 2D base because I probably will be deriving other classes out of this down the line. Um, let's go ahead and make sure that's a header file in the right spot. It is. Right. Um, shoot, this is going to be complicated. So um, I just need about everything at this point. I know I'm going to. So we're gonna need all our um, buffers and arrays. So we're gonna do our vertex array first. Then we'll do our um, vertex buffer. Doesn't really matter for that order, I guess, but it just is how I'm grouping them in my head. Um, and then our index buffer. All right, we're gonna need access to our shaders. So we'll do an include and how many back is that? Is that two back? Uh, yeah, it is shaders. Headers, shader. And then uh, I, I'm going to need our math. I'm going to need our uh, vectors, potentially our matrices. Um, and instead of just including individual parts in case I need other things from it, we're going to include our, um, oh, okay. That was the wrong one. Math. 
uh, we're going to include our math core instead of the individual. So we're loading up everything in our math core. Remember, math core is just a header file saying here are all the core files we use in our math setup. Um, right. And so namespace, we'll do neuron engine again as usual. This is going to be graphics again as usual. And uh, this class will be our renderable, renderable 2D. Yeah, I'll call it base here as well. I thought about it for a minute and not calling it that. Um, oh, because name isn't a thing. All right, there we go. Cool. Um, sorry, I was just grabbing this. Actually, I need to grab almost just every, about everything from in there. There's a comment at this point. There aren't that many attributes. I can delete them in like five seconds. It's faster than copying and pasting two times. Okay, uh, let's grab the copyright notice as well. Also, let me fill in what that one is doing. I just realized I didn't go back to do that. So uh, this is our vertex array. And um, what we'll say for this one is this header file contains, God, my neck is killing me, the vertex uh, buffer functions. It's descriptive. Um, this will feed into the index buffer and then the buffer array. Cool. Um, ba -bum, ba -bum. So for our constructors, we're gonna need this to be public. I just have a feeling I didn't do that up here and left it, oh, I did, okay. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, and this will be renderable 2D base. And we're going to need um, access to our position, which is a VEC3, even in 2D. Um, remember Z order in Unreal? It's a 2D thing, but they have a third thing called Z order. It's the what layer is it? What priority does it get? We know how big it is. We know the size, which is VEC3? No, VEC4. Yeah, RGBA, VEC4. Um, we need the shader that we're passing in. Okay, so... What order did I do it in main? Because basically we're doing what I did in main earlier. Vertices, buffer, okay. <clears throat> so it's gonna be our color. So since we're doing vertices, we're gonna pass in color at the same time. We're not gonna do it after like we did in main, which is what's happening down here. Um, so, okay, we want vec3. You math, vec3, there we go. Okay. Uh, this is position. We want you math. Um, let's transform the scale. Uh, so vec two scale color. I said and that is RGBA vec four color and then we're going to pass in a reference to our shader okay cool and then we will have our um destructor now because this is base hmm give me a second I just want to look up something. Completely unrelated. Um,
because this is a base class. That, that's why we called it base. It, it's going to be an abstract class. And I just want to see if GLW or GLFW has anything to say about um, about abstract classes. Welcome in, Abdul. I'm doing well and working on our renderer. How are you doing, man? Um, right. Hey, Chica, you still there, man? If you are, I have a question for you. And it's about uh, abstracted classes. I just want to make sure I'm thinking about this uh, in a somewhat sane and sensible manner. I know what an abstract class is, Google. Thank you. That's why I asked a very specific question, not what an abstract class is. That's a very general question. I want to know about it in GLFW. Okay, that's actually useful. That's also terrifying to see. Uh, I'm in university coursework and attempting to build a window using GLFW on following documentation and video series given the following. The Hazel Engine by Chernow. It's a different engine that I know. I know about... Uh, now, Hazel's the one that he's doing it currently on his new channel. Never mind. Um, I'm really struggling to understand both pointers and abstraction. Oh, I'll come back to that later. Okay, no, that's all very basic stuff. I don't need to worry about that. Um, how to. Okay. Nope, that uh, is about abstraction within GLFW. Oh, that would have been useful like a week or two ago. I'm not having issues with callbacks. Um, right, so because this is a base class, I am actually not going to do it this way. We're going to define everything in here. We're not going to create a class file. Um, everything is going to be overwritten um, except for this. And I'm not creating a class file just for the constructor now. Um, right. So, uh, actually, we're going to do that for now. Um, all right. So, this is an abstracted class. Uh, the constructor, of course, in everything can't be virtual but everything else is going to be virtual here so we'll use a virtual destructor there we go um right and then we're going to go down to our attributes and because again we're protected class we're going to inherit we're going to make this protected instead of private because we want the children to have access to be able to edit and set these as and when it needed and we're going to have a vec3 for position a what are you giving me an error about up there? A vec, Jesus Christ. A vec two for scale. A vec, okay, so I was freaking out about that still being errored and the other one not being. Four for color. Uh, and then we're gonna put our terminator in. We're gonna add one for our shader. Okay, uh, in fact, actually, I'm going to just group those together. And then we need our index buffer, which will be a pointer to our index buffer. Don't argue with me. Uh, then we'll do vertex buffer, and I'm going to say don't argue with me again. And I'm talking to the IDE. I told you not to argue with me, IDE. Right, okay. Um, Cool, that gets that bit set up, and because it's virtual, um, I'm just trying to think of what functions we're going to want in here. All the ones I'm thinking about are the getters and setters that are going to be inline or not overridden, so those aren't going to be virtual. Um... Hmm. 
So I'm just going through all my notes now, make sure I haven't missed anything uh, too painfully obvious. GFW window. Um, yes, yes it is. Also, because it's just wrong. Like you, you are just wrong. Also, Chica, I was gonna ask you a question earlier, but you weren't here, so you can't now comment on that. Sorry, I'm trying to find my window, my notes window. Um, I don't think there is, but I'm honestly not sure right now. Give me half half a moment here just to uh, think about this. Um, I don't know if those are going to be in here, like all the fills that we're going to use and all those other bits, but for now, we don't need them for testing. So for now, we're not going to include them. We are, however, going to go to the bathroom really quickly. Give me one second, ladies and gents. gents. Also, let me figure out how to turn off the camera again. Alrighty, back. I'm also now doing the indulgent thing. Um, hmm. Alright, we want the destructor to be purely virtual. So we're not going to make it equal to zero like we will for other things. Um, but what we'll do is do our constructor here because, again, I'm not creating a class file for something that's going to be overridden time and time again where there are no sort of like base functions that aren't going to be like inline ones. Um, which I don't even think we have any setters for this one. Yeah, no, everything we're setting, we're setting up here. So we're going to just set position to, thank you for whatever that was, uh, position to be position. Uh, then we'll do size is... So, uh, sorry, size scale is scale uh, then we'll do color without the u is color without the u and of course shader also without a u is shader also without a u okay that joke is done now um and then we're gonna need to create a new vertex array So, um, which is why we haven't assigned anything down here. Do we actually have to create it? Um, there's no semicolon there. What am I doing? Uh, vertex array is then equal to new. So remember, we need to use delete now. Vertex array. We're not going to pass in any arguments for that one. 
Okay. Um, what are you giving me an error about? Oh, that's vertex buffer. I don't want a vertex buffer. Okay. Um, okay, now there we go. Ah, uh, ba ba bum ba bum ba bum. So I need to get that document I literally linked you guys to just last back on my screen because I had my note for something I want to do. Um, sorry, I have a lot of tabs open. Give me a second. Nope, 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 nope. Completely unrelated. That's Twitter. Going the wrong way through my stuff. Ah. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Okay. Um... Ooh, is there a render upside down compared to mine? That's translation, not. I don't know what's position. Okay. Um... Okay. So, uh, what that's going to be is. Zero. Oh, hang on, wait, hang on. I actually need to make it a, a, a GL float vertices. Okay. Shouter. Shouter? I like how you're taking this seriously, uh, Chica. Um, all right, so it's gonna be 0 0.0 f, 0 0.0 f, 0 0.0 f. Um, we're drawing a square, so it's four. Okay, so it's four, we're adding in an extra one. That's the extra one. Oh crap, where's that document going? Sorry, I minimized that document to read the chat. Um, boink, boink. Negative boink boink boink. Okay. Um, so it was boink. Oh, sorry, blah boink. So I keep saying uh, size because that's something that's in one of the documents I'm looking at. It's scale. We're thinking about this in transform. So it's scale. Why? Sorry, I had to actually think about that for a second. And 0.0 f. And then we want uh, scale z y. So corner, corner, and then the, the midpoint one. Um, so that's, oh, no. Uh, sorry, I meant scale uh, x. And then we want y again. And then nothing because we're 2D. And then X is the one that. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure I had this right. And I'm trying to draw it on my head, I'm having an issue. Okay, now I really wish I didn't close. Oh, sorry, I didn't turn the camera back on. I, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm sitting here. I've been doing this like the entire time, making this like shape in the air. Um, that's probably why you didn't might not have understood why I was saying up. Oh, sorry, give me a second. So, really wish I didn't close paint out. Was what I was saying when I was doing that.
It's from the corner. So it's actually zero. Bottom right corner. So it's zero, one, two, zero. So that's scale. So we're not saying the numbers, it wasn't the zero that you see on the screen right now. It's the what's the first vertex being drawn. And it's the bottom right corner. And when we inverse that, so we're doing the other side of the square, it's the upper right corner. So that's zero, which means that we don't want to draw a vertice here or here. So that's going to be x. Because we're on the X uh, line. That's how I understand this. God knows my understanding is like I have, I've understood it incorrectly, but let's see if this actually works. Okay. Um, of course, we need to terminate that. Okay. Um, and then again, we have four vertices and we're drawing color. Color is easy. It's also a float, by the way. So it's GL float. Uh, we'll call this colors because we can have more than one color. And. It's gonna work very much the same way. Let me put a terminator in before I forget. Except for this one's gonna be a lot simpler. We're not, we have, every every vertice is gonna be painted a color, right? We have four vertices that we're really drawing out of six because we're telling it not to draw two of them. So they all are gonna be taking in the same arguments. We're just gonna have different ones for each one. So it's gonna be color and then we're gonna do x, color, y, color, z, so that's RGB, and then color, w, and this will be our alpha. Of course, color should be capitalized to follow our convention. And we're just gonna paste that line four times, or three times. We've written it four total. Well, you know what I mean. All right. Um, all right, I need to then construct our vertex array. And we'll do that by binding the buffers. Now, when we bind buffers, if you looked at the arguments we're passing in, we are passing in, let me go back here. Where is bind? A particular vertex buffer, right? So let's go to our vertex buffer. What we need to do is create the vertex buffer. So I'm just gonna copy the constructor so I remember the order the stuff goes in, because otherwise I am going to forget. Um, right, so we're going to do uh, vertex array, add buffer, and we're gonna create a new vertex buffer, which is why we need the constructor, why we need to include it up here. Excuse me. Um, and before we do that, I'm just gonna store this at index zero. And I'm gonna copy this. So we're gonna need to do this for color as well. Right, so the argument here uh, goes data. What data type are we passing in? We're passing in these vertices. That's our data type, it's float. Vertices. Right, um, count. Count is how many per the thing there are. Hang on, is that right? I think I have my naming wrong here. Hang on, hang on, give me a second. This is, um, I don't think I'm gonna call it size in a minute. And I think that's what confused me the last time. I might call this length. Yeah, we're renaming this length because count and length actually give us size. Uh, so let's just convert that over to length just so I have that that way. Um, and then this is now length instead, okay. So, um, uh, 
our count is length times how many we're passing in. So we're passing in one, two, three, four of three. So let's just do four times three and we're passing in the length of each of those is three. Right, and then for our colors, it's vertices, but instead of it three by four of three of them, we are doing four, it's a vert four, and we're passing, wait, hang on. That's the wrong key. Uh, right, so it's four, yeah, that's right, it's four lines. There are four elements on it, three elements on it, yeah. Um, and this is made of four components, yeah. Okay, there we go. Sorry, that took me a moment. Um, yeah, Adrian, go for it, man. Feel free to ask. All right, so I think that's right. What am I not doing? Uh, index buffer. Oh, so we need the index buffer, duh. So we need to say what indices are we actually drawing. So, uh, 0, 1, 2. Sorry, 0, 1, 2. Zero. One, two. Oh crap, I know I have it in the main because I had to look this up and I, I can never remember. Oh, maybe I didn't have it in main like I thought I did. All right, I, I don't know. Um, all right, first, I know it's an unsigned integer. Let's start with what we do now. We're calling this indices. These are the industries we want to draw. Um, okay. Also, why are we doing it that way? I could just do that. Um, can I get rid of doing that here too? And here? Let's use C++11 constructors, yeah. Um, So I'm going to have you answer the second question. So I've been asked, you know, why, uh, in my survival series, will I be doing a combat system and why I didn't do a thirst system? Um, I'm going to answer the second one indirectly by making the person who's asked answer the question themselves because it's a fairly obvious answer. Um, as for the combat system... Yes, there will be a hunting-based system for uh, hunting animals after we do the animal AI. Now, Adrian, why haven't I done a thirst system? There's a very, very simple reason for that. What, what's the difference between the hunger system and the thirst system? Coding-wise, that is. What's the difference? Implementation-wise, there are differences, potentially, depending on how you do it. Um... But just, just think about that for a minute. What's the difference between the two systems? Um, okay, so I know this needs to be six digits long because there are six arrays total. So it's zero. Okay, so zero, zero, it's at the top actually, zero, one, two, three, zero. Zero, two. So it's zero, one, two. Three, zero, two. I think is the order. I think that's right. Oh God, that's probably gonna be wrong. Okay. 
Um, and then we're gonna do an index buffer. We're gonna create new index buffer. There are six uh, things are in there. And we're passing in indices. So it's a count of six. Our data type is indices. There we go. Chica, behave yourself. Or I will tase you. All right, now for our destructor, we get to get rid of our terminator so we can actually build a destructor. This is really simple. Even if we're overriding it, we still need to delete the vertex buffers that we've made and our index buffer, because hey, we use new. So we're gonna use delete and let's do our vertex buffer. No, sorry, vertex array. We're deleting our vertex array because we are storing two new buffers in there. Now, if you wanna be really, really pedantic, what you, no, because we're not storing it as a um, an array here itself. So we'll just do it this way. And uh, let me just go over to our vertex array. I'm pretty sure in our vertex array, yeah, okay. So we don't need to beat a dead horse that way. Um, we'll do index buffer. Oh, by the way, Adrian, the reason I'm not directly answering that question isn't to call you out or anything. It's because I want you to think about the logic behind it. Um, and there is a if there is an actual reason I haven't, and that logic and that reason um, should tell you how to do your own thirst system as another hint as to why I haven't done it. Right, um, and then we have our methods, which are all be public in this case, because these are gonna be our getters. Um, so we're gonna do these. Um, so it'll be in, in line, um, you math, vec three reference, get position, const return, term, position. Okay, uh, let's just change that to an A. Uh, qualifiers dropped in binding reference and within the next other type. What? Oh, to type, oh, okay. Uh, it is const. Do you need the type, do you need the type to be const? Of type, con okay, of type const, okay. So, <coughs> there we go. And then do a vec2 of get scale and we'll return scale and we'll do a vec4 of um, color without the u just to drive trica even more crazy does it uh, adrian does it make sense why we aren't doing the third system and again i'm not asking to be facetious or anything i'm legitimately asking like if that makes sense, you know, based on what we've already done, why we're not doing it. Because if it doesn't, let me know and I'll actually explain it properly. Uh, then we're doing an in, oh wait, hang on, I can just paste this. Uh, huh. I forgot I could do that. Uh, and we're passing back our shader. Uh, this will be get shader. And we're returning our shader. Okay, cool. Uh, then we're gonna do another one. Screw it, we're gonna have two more, or one more of these now. And uh, this one will be our index buffer, which is a pointer, so we can't make it a reference there. This will be get, and actually we're gonna call this get um, uh, index buffer, uh, index buffer object. And we're gonna return our index buffer. And then we're gonna do our vertex array. If I can actually do this. And again, that's not a reference, it's a pointer. So this is gonna be our VAO. Sorry, it took me a second there, which is our um, vertex array object. So get vertex array object. And we're gonna return our vertex 
All right. Oh, okay. That was really loud for some reason inside. Um. Right. Uh. Okay. Here we are. So that is our base class done? Question mark. I have no idea if that's right. Um, if anything goes wrong once we construct the shader or shader the um, renderer, this is the first spot I'm going to be looking. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we don't need a class file for this because we're going to override everything. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, let's move on to create the actual renderer from this. So let's create our first renderer. Uh, you know what? I I don't like the wizard for some reason. In in this, I always like doing this by hand, unless I'm in visual, unless I'm in um, Unreal. Um, so this will be our simple renderer. 2D. I'm gonna copy that name. Now I'm gonna do something I rarely, rarely do, just because that name is so long. Just going to create a new uh, class file here, and this one we will actually need our CPP file. There we go. Um, all right, I didn't include what the heck this one does. Um, so let me just go somewhere where I know there's one of these things. Grab one of those. Go back here. Let's paste this in. This one I can give a little bit more of a description to. This is the abstract class header for a 2D renderer. This class is meant to be abstracted. So there is no CPP file. Um, and to be derived from to create G open GL renderers 2D. Okay, uh, currently this class stores a, a VAO and I index buffer object. Yeah, sorry, I always have to think about those acronyms because um, they throw me for a loop. Um, they, they genuinely do throw me for a loop and I always have to think about those. Okay, um, so here in our simple renderer 2D, um, we need first to uh, inherit from our uh, renderer 2D, or renderable 2D base. Um, you know, I'm not sure why I called it renderable instead of renderer. Sorry, this chair is driving me up the wall again. Um, hmm. Yeah, whatever. I'm not gonna worry about the name. Uh, include. Sorry, the reason I was thinking about the name was I need to include this thing. Um, simple. Include. Simple renderer 2D. Okay. Uh, we're gonna start there. We're gonna be doing namespace neuron engine neuro engine or new engine uh, graphics. Cool uh, class. This will be our simple renderer 2D, and we'll do public renderer. Oh, sorry now public. Uh, I think I fucked something up. Part of my language. I honestly think I just screwed something up.
Right. Um... Crap. Um, I'm, I, I'm honestly certain I've messed something up. Um, have I just, this is wrong. Okay. I didn't mess up. I, I misexplained everything. That's what I've done wrong. Okay. <laughs> That's just as bad as doing the code wrong, to be fair. Right. Um... Okay. Uh, this is an abstract class for storing... Actually, this isn't really abstract. Uh, this is, I guess it's an interface, really, um, for buffers and shaders being passed into memory in a renderer. Okay, that's really what this is going on. This is just wrong, though. I, I. We don't need this. We're gonna come back to this in a minute. I need to create one more abstract class first. And this is the class I was describing earlier when I wasn't thinking about things. Um, and, uh, well, simple renderer 2D picks our name for us. It's renderer 2D. And we just want the header file because this actually will be completely abstracted out. Um, Right, so this one's fairly simple. First, let me just grab, screw it. We're grabbing all of this. I'll just fix it up once we're in here. Uh, we don't need any of this. Um, I do want that last line of uh, things though. Pretty sure we're not gonna have any attributes actually. Uh, we aren't gonna have constructors just so I don't accidentally do that. Um, this is now renderer 2D. Okay, so um, abstract class um, for 2D renderers. All 2D renderers will inherit from this base. Oh, I actually cocked up again. Sorry, this is supposed to be an abstract class. So following my convention, that should be base. There we go. This is what we know this is meant to be a, an abstract class or at least a fully abstract class. Um, so we need to submit and flush the data, cool. So we're not gonna have any constructors, we can get rid of that. We're not gonna have any attributes. Uh, there, everything's gonna be method-based and it's gonna be protected. Okay, so methods, uh, 2D renderer base, namespace graphics, yeah. Um, protected, because we're inheriting. These are gonna be virtual void submit, and we're gonna submit our const uh, renderable we're not gonna be changing this, we're just taking the information in renderable 2D, which means we need to actually, well, I probably deleted all these, uh, include our renderable 2D base. So it's renderable 2D base, sorry about that. Cool, did I get that name wrong? Uh, renderable 2D base H. Let me just copy, let me just copy the name. Oh, this should, <laughs> I guess I probably should give it, um, first give it a name. 
because uh, it's confused. And that will just be called uh, render target for now. And we're abstracting, so that's going to be set to equal. And then we're going to do a virtual void and have something called flush, which will also set to zero. Why are you giving me an error? What? Okay, I'm just out of curiosity, is there a typo? No, that's right, okay. Renderable 2D is not defined. Class renderable 2D. Okay. Um, hmm. All right, let's just see if you build. Oh, you succeeded building, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna worry about that warning for now. I am honestly concerned by this. All right, well, that was literally all we needed to do. That's the part I cocked up on. Um, so we need to inherit from there, and that is, uh, first, we need to include what we're inheriting from, and that's going to be our renderer, not renderable, base. And that is just because of what we just went through over there a second ago. go cool all uh, right so we're gonna have um, again we're not gonna need a constructor for this we are going to need to include vector all right um, so we'll do STD vector const and then we're going to pass in a storage of whatever we're rendering um, and we're going to make it a reference so we don't have to worry about setting it and this will be our render queue why are you giving me this error I'm just, I don't know, but. Up to date, sorry, I couldn't see the thing. I was waiting for it to keep scrolling. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what's going on here. Also, this is an attribute, so let me just grab um, this thing. Cool. All right. Um, radio. Then we're going to have our methods. And, you know, this is really easy. All we do is unpin that, come back here, copy all of this. Um, in this version, it's going to be public. And instead of over zero, we're gonna use the C++, modern C++ uh, keyword of override. You actually don't need to use this word, but 
it helps us if there are some errors. Again, uh, give me one second. I am going to just reshuffle in the seat. Sorry, um, I'm an idiot as I'm looking at that as I return. This should actually be uh, a reference. Yeah, I see, it helps. We know that's wrong now. Um, okay, there we go. Why are we getting this error? It's in the same namespace. No idea. Right. Um, let's grab these two lines. Go over here. Do include, and then we're gonna go up one folder. Go into the headers, and then we want the uh, simple renderer two D. Okay. We can get rid of the virtuals. We can get rid of the override and that, and we can do boink, boink. And also give it a bit of ritual. And come back in here, grab the name, paste that in for our scope. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, using namespace, uh, neuron engine, graphics. There we go. Oh, uh, why are you? Okay, so all Summit is doing is we're adding something to the end of the renderer queue. Um, wait, hang on, are we adding it or adding it to the front? So give me a second. Seriously, why isn't this page loading? I use this page all the time. Why aren't you loading? Uh, okay, cool. Um, So I'm just wondering if you want to do um, in place push or uh, at. And just double checking my options. Also double checking if it's the end of this queue or the front of this queue. I, I have a feeling that I might be having some things backwards in me head. Um, Wow, like the basic Geeks for Geeks site and CPP reference and C++ aren't loading for me. All right. Um, we're going to use push back. And the reason why we're using push back is one, we want it at the end of the queue. And two, we want to increase the size of the vector by one, which push back does for us. So that way we don't have to worry about resizing it each time. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our render render yeah render Q and then we're gonna do push back and then we're gonna push back our renderable base okay oh no yeah target yeah renderable base which is named target render okay I'm gonna build just to see what the heck is going on why is it failed okay Um, excuse me one second. If you can't tell, I'm still not feeling 100% from stuff. Just give me one moment.
Sorry about that. As I said, I am not feeling 100% still and have not had time to properly rest. Thus me having to dart off there and then come back. Okay, so I really don't know what the heck is going on with this. Um, yeah. Because I typoed. <laughs> okay, I'm actually surprised this didn't return an error. Just that is okay. Uh, there we go. Okay. Let's build now. Make sure we don't get that error anymore. We still have an error. Okay. What the sh Reference is illegal. Okay. That's a simple enough fix. Uh, if we can't use references, we'll use a pointer then. So, uh, blink, blink, um, blink. Okay, and, and blink, question mark. Did I get them all? I got them all. Okay, cool. Uh, so flush, flush is when we actually, you know, put this thing on the screen. So, um, right. I'm just thinking if I want to do this as an if statement where we get the size of it and then we iterate through it, or do I want to do a while statement? Neither are optimal, to be fair. They both kind of suck. Um, right, so this is a simple render. So we're only rendering one thing um, at a time. So an if statement would make sense. All right. When we do our normal render, which will just pass the array through, and allow OpenGL to handle it, we will be using, well, there's no if statement there. We can't use an if statement because we're not iterating through it. Otherwise it'd be a one to one again. We'll use while there because we need to pass every, we need to pass the thing. Uh, all right, so if we do it that way there, then I'm gonna wanna mirror that here to make my life easier down the road. So I think I'm going to use a while statement. You know what? Maybe I want to be different just so I know it's different from the other one. I know it's doing. So we're going to do if for now. So do if uh, size ti is equal to zero, i is less than. Uh, okay, sorry, I got confused by the size being off there. Render q dot size. I have the lurking feeling that's actually just wrong. Um, right. Um, Yeah, no, that's okay. That should work. I think that should work. I hope to God it works. Um, 
I++. Right, so what we're gonna need to do is we need to get the first element of our vertex and I'm just gonna use at zero. But I'm just gonna double check something. Um, so I wonder, I think there's a um, Uh, a function for this already built into vectors. And I'm just looking at my uh, vector stuff here. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. At back assign assign capacity. C begin. And we could use data, which returns a pointer to the first element of a vector container. Uh, we could do front, which returns a reference to the first element of a vector. Um, I would much prefer the reference to a pointer. What does at actually return? Is that the rev or we can use at, which returns a reference. Um, I think front is going to be optimized as compared to reference. And as I said, for, um, doo -doo -doo -doo, what was the other one I was looking at? Data. I don't want a pointer. I want the reference. Also, I think we're doing that. We're passing the pointer to the pointer. Um, what are you giving me an error about? Vector const neuron under graphics render const. What oh, shit? All right. Um, renderable 2D base. All right, was that renderable? Are you giving me? Okay. Great. Uh, cool. Oh, sorry, for size t i equals zero, i is less than render q dot size i plus plus. Cool. Um, I said we're using front, I think, a moment ago. I think. I hope I said we're using front. Um, so we're gonna do const renderable 2D base pointer uh, renderable equals and then we're going to get this from the queue so equals and then get this from the queue as I said render queue dot front okay cool um, and that's why we wanted the reference because I knew we we're storing this in a pointer and we didn't want to have a pointer to a pointer and then we're gonna do uh, renderable. So what we've passed there. We're gonna wanna get the vertex array. We're going to want to bind this array. Um, okay. Um, Let's go to our renderable 2D base. And um, get VAO is a vertex array. So let's go to our vertex array. And um, what? It's public. I haven't declared under scope. It's public. What? Okay, hang on. Renderable. Get VAO. Just make sure that, yeah, that compiles. Get buffers. Okay. Um, vertex array. Uh, 
Why can you see this, but you can't see this? Get buffers, array ID, vertex array, buffers. What the hell? Oh, please don't tell me it's what I think it is. Oh, I fucking... Pardon my language. I hate namespaces sometimes. Just want to see... Okay, let's just undo everything for a second because that didn't seem to actually help. Hmm, I don't, okay. Start here again. We go to renderable 2D. So let's go to renderable 2D. And we get our ver vertex array object. So uh, here's our renderable 2D. We get our vertex array object, which returns a vertex array, which is set correctly to vertex array. Um, right. So from vertex array, which is a pointer, so we want to use an arrow operator. We go to here and we're trying to find bind. And we have defined bind here, yep. Right. Just to be really weird for a moment, let's just make this public again. Because I haven't redeclared my scope. And we're still getting that same error. The object has type qualifiers that are not compatible with the member function. Okay. Okay. So, something about our type qualifiers. Um, pointer const. So, we're not saying we're overriding it. Const pointer. Yep. Const pointer, yep. Cool. Um, okay. So, yep. We're not changing that, so that should be good. Vertex array, yep. VAO, yep. Const, yep. We're actually returning the vertex array. <sighs> oh, okay, hang on. I think these have to be const for this to work. Yep, there we go. Okay, that, oh, no, oh, okay. Illegal reference to non-static member in vertex array array ID. Illegal reference to non-static member. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Forgot we need to do that. Uh, okay, build one more time. Welcome in, uh, DTech Studio. How you doing, man? And we now have succeeded. Okay, so that's that part of the renderer done. Uh, no, it isn't. Sorry. <laughs> Whoa, we paused because we had a random error there. Um, we need to bind the buffers now. So we're going to get the uh, index buffer object. So we'll go from a renderable to our get IBO. And from there, we will do our bind. 
Let me guess, I forgot to put cons there too. Yeah. Uh, so index buffer. Const. Cons. And before we build, let's go back here and fix this up. Adding in our const. And let's hit, hit build. Okay, there we go. Um. Right, uh, I need to get the, we need to set our matrices, and I, for the love of me, can't remember my um, uniform matrix setups, the uniform matrix four. So, let's just go here for a second. Um, sorry, we're, we're putting it into this matrix, we're using it from the vector. Um, so, it's going to be in vector header. And I want the VEC4 stuff. So I think I do. Was that right earlier? Am I just having a brain fart? Um, Huh. I swear we did this. And now I can't find it. Um, oh, it's in the shader. That's why we did do it. I was like, I remember doing these. Uh, okay, so um, let's just grab both of these. I can't remember which one I'm going to use after spending like three minutes looking for this thing. Um... Oh, I was thinking that was the actual vector for a second. I was very confused. Okay. Uh, not my vector stuff, that is. Um, all right, right. So what we want to do is we want to set the matrix for this. We want to set the model matrix. We want to draw it. We want to, yeah. Um... Right, so let's just start. We're gonna take the object we want to render, our sprite, our renderable target. We're gonna do get our shader from this thing. And then we want to do... Okay, uh, let's go back to our shader. Yeah, okay. Just give me a second. I'm put something fake in. Uh, well, model matrix. And then, uh, come on, you math matrix. Um,. Just for now, I just need something in there to see what the error I'm gonna get is. How's that two for your arguments? Right. You know what? All right. So, uh, model. Matrix. All 
Great. Instead of trying to figure out what the heck is going on there, I'm just going to actually build this thing like I should and uh, make sure I get the name correct from here because I'm really paranoid about that. Um, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, we are going to do UMath. We're actually going to build our matrix here. Um, matrix translation. And we are gonna go to renderable. And then we want to get position. What are you not happy with? Oh, hang on. Is it that counts you're not happy with? Okay. Sorry, what gave it away was, let me just undo that, because that error threw me for a loop. Um, at the very end there, it, it says argument types are const char three, uh, object type is const, and then it has something else. It was just... Yeah, something about that just read weirdly to me. I'm like, okay, well, let's remove one of these consts. Actually, I thought it was going to be that one, to be fair. I was guessing on that. All right. Um... We need to then actually draw these elements onto our screen. So what we'll do is um, gl draw elements, that one. Um, and we're gonna pass in the mode, we're gonna do triangles. Uh, so it's a macro, so it's capitals. That took me a moment to remember. Um, we're gonna get our count from our, so glc is e, that's our index, i, I mean, that's our index one, so that's renderable um, get ibo. And then we want to get the actual count from that. Get count. Cool. Um, type. Okay, I actually don't remember this one. Um, sorry, I I know I've posted up the links to the ones I'm looking at for this, um, but I they don't have this clearly explained in there to me. So um, GLW. Drawing triangle, weird. Hey, you've used the same thing I did for my math. Cool. Um, thank you, that's what I'm looking for. GL enum type, GL enum type. Uh, indices must be of either GL unsigned byte, GL unsigned short, or GL unsigned int. And I'm pretty sure our indices are GL unsigned ints. Um, GL floats. What? Wait, no, indices. GL unsigned int. Um, yeah, so we're going to go with GL unsigned int. So GL unsigned int and then uh, const indices give me a second <laughs> okay uh, by the way this is the document I'm pulling from for this I'm gonna post that in the chat as well just give me a second to get the chat back up on screen so yeah there's a document that we're using for that part um, all right, so indices specifies a pointer to a location where the indices are stored. Okay. Uh, do, 
Da, 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 da. Ah, uh, okay. So, okay. So, we're going to start at zero. At the first one to see. That's at least how I... I did not mean to close that window. Uh, fortunately, shift... Uh, control shift T exists for a reason. What I meant to do with that window is to pin it back into the window I was reading from earlier. There we go. Um, right. So... I have no idea. Uh, and then again, thinking about our sandwich, we need to unbind the IBO and then unbind the VAO. So again, we're doing that inverse thing that we did earlier. Except for the sandwich has a little bit of garnish or a toothpick on top, holding it all together. So um, yes, yeah, so this is actually how I imagine the code. I think about it like a sandwich. Uh, it's not because I'm a fat ass, even though I am, but it is just because sandwiching as a description is used so often, it's how I think about it. Um, you can blame the American in me though. And then we're gonna do VAO and do the same, if I remember to actually put my brackets in. Okay. Right, I think that's what we need to do here. I think that's everything. We'll find out in a moment or two. Um, right, so let's build, construct our renderer test itself. And I know I'm gonna be using a lot of stuff already in there, but screw dealing with what's already in there. We're just gonna create a new one. I'm gonna leave the stream test on bottom because again, this actually isn't meant to be run ever. Oh, do not run, copy code into main. Um, that's literally, that's all it's there for is for me to copy code back into main to test something. So, um, we need to include our renderers and I'm just going to leave the includes I've removed in there just for historical reference for myself. Um, all right. So we have the shader, so we need the three buffers. So that'll be graphics. Uh, I put that in the renderer folder. So we'll start with our um vertex buffer and then we'll do our index buffer and we'll do our um array vertex array and knew there was something wrong with highlighting that word um and then we need our simple renderer I think simple there we go all right I think that's all we need and this will be void um, renderer to the test okay Boink, oh, yeah, boink. Yes, sorry for the random sound effects you all just got subjected to. Um, you know what, actually I wanna do a bit of practice not copying. Okay. I know I can copy and do this quickly. I just wanna get practice in writing this line a couple of times just so I get used to actually doing it. Um, so I'm just going to, and again, I know, to do replace sizing with full screen. Um, but for now, what we're gonna do is declare two vectors, or sorry, two integers, one called width, and we're gonna set that at 1920, and one called height, or h and w, not width, not height and width, but h and w for height and width. Um, let's use the correct constructor, Zach, come on. There we go. All right, so there are our two constructors, and we're gonna construct a window, which we will call main window. We can call it something else if you want. Uh, we're just going to keep the neuron engine bit in there for now, if I can spell it. Not that it matters. And we're going to pass in our height and width. 
There we go. Um, we have our input class, which we need to bring in. So that's input, input base, and it's called input. Cool. Uh, cool, we need a terminator, not a colon. Now we're gonna check if the main window failed to load. Oh, sorry, not failed to load, that's what we do. We did that in the window. Uh, what we're checking is if the input, cause we substantiate the window first, then the input, and then when we substantiate the input, we tell the input to pass itself to a window as a reference to it, to being an input controller. So we're gonna do set input, so this is where we do this, and we return a bool, because if it fails, we don't want to continue. Um, and what are we passing in? This is that part where I said, oh, we're telling window, hey, uh, you're, this is the input. So that's this bit. So we pass in a reference to input, and if it fails out, if we get a fault, so if it fails, in which case we get a true here, so is not true, uh, then we are just going to return out of this. We want to error out. Um, actually, just thinking about this really quickly, did I ever put in an output uh, log for this failing? Um, Windows, 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 Windows. Uh, source set input. Close set input. Yeah, no, we have um a logging event. Cool. We have the double part where it does the console and the actual file. Um. Right. Uh. So I'm gonna set our background. Um. So that'll be gl clear color and then we're gonna pass in gray which I'm doing at 45 and all the primary uh, attributes and then uh, one in our alpha all right um, I just noticed a clamp there and I've been trying to play around with it you can't get um, not UHD HDI uh, colors apparently in OpenGL that way, like you can with some other things like Unreal, but they've probably done that intentionally. Um, I still want to output my uStream uh, right to really? Like, oh, I'm missing a colon. Uh, right to log, and then what we're gonna do is so there's a string that we're concatenating, uh, so we need to cast to character. GL get GL get string and we're getting the string for uh, GL version and then what we're doing is we are casting to char again stop trying to be smarter than me visual studio and that was an acceptable case of you trying to be smarter than me loaded except for you still failed um Right, um, there we go, Jesus, uh, okay, and you know what, uh, I don't know what comes next anymore, <laughs> so let's go back up here, that's as far as I can remember, we're not doing it, it's all shit, uh, we don't need any of that, we're gonna take these bits, um, for the ones wondering why it says now, I changed the math, and how we do this, I think, two streams back. So I'm just gonna, uh, first off, you know what? I have the alt key. Boink. Okay. Um, right, and it doesn't really matter, so long as we don't delete too many bits. Okay. Um, I really enjoy the alt key a little too much. Okay, there we go. Um, right, right, right. Uh, so then we need to load in the shaders, question mark? I'm trying to do this as much from memory as I can at this point. Yeah, then we load in the shaders. And I actually, I'm gonna just cheat for this one and copy that, because I don't want to try to remember those paths. Right, so let's just actually start commenting this out. Um, Build main window, set input and 
callback events for input. Set window. Background color. Um, log if OpenGL loaded correctly. Uh, different orthographic calculations. Sorry. <laughs> I'm laughing at the way I'm saying this. Shaders. So, okay, we have the shader. Then what we want to do is we're going to then um, enable them. So shader test, because this is still a test at the end of the day, really. We're enabling it. And then we have three, four matrices in there that we need to set. Um, Bert, three. Uh, just so I have a reference to this in here, because again, doing this from, trying to get used to doing this. Again, this is what my second time really working on this aspect of it. Um, and I'm still learning it. I mean, I used a cookie cutter shader I found on OpenGL and just tweaked it for my needs. Hopefully did it correctly, no idea. Um, someone else on the team will be coming back and actually doing the shaders or taking a look at the shaders more thoroughly, getting tessellation in, getting all the other bits and bobs, edge color, edge highlighting in. Um, so we need to set the projection matrix first. Then we set the model matrix and then everything else can come after that. So we need to do the projection matrix first and that's gonna be in shader test. Um, and it's literally the first one there. Um, something about this seems wrong. There's, I swear we had more, okay, you know what? No, we're gonna debug later on. We're gonna just see if I can get this right. So it's uh, shader test set uniform matrix and that is a vec4 mat4 yeah matrix4 uh and that is our just to be on the safe side paste that name in there that way and um yeah i just realized something with this um <laughs> Freak out at me in a moment and tell us sense. Let me finish what I'm doing first. That way, you know. Uh, okay. Um, we always start with this first one. So we're gonna start with the, that one. Um, right. Is that everything for that one? Yeah, it's two arguments. What we're setting and the matrix we're using. There we go. Uh, we then need to set the View matrix? Do we ever set the view matrix? I don't think we ever do. I don't remember doing the view matrix last time. I am actually gonna check, cause I don't remember. Uh, that would have been a hard no, we don't. Cool. Uh, so that can go right away, along with the one we did. Uh, then it's shader test dot set uniform and it's matrix four as you can see down there just behind the thing uh to be on the safe side we'll copy paste that in um it's model matrix so we want to set the translation I don't know what we're gonna set it to for now. Uh, we're just gonna do a VEC3. Um, wait, VEC4. No, VEC. This isn't right. We're passing in a matrix that has a translation. That is a VEC3 translation, question mark. And um, I'm gonna do 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Uh, that one won't matter for now. Um, let me just be pedantic and stuff. Um, 
Okay. Boink. Boink. Okay, yeah, I see it. All right. Um. All right, that's the ones from that one. Let's go to our fragment shader. And it's color and light position we're taking care of in this one. Cool. So um, that is, again, shader test, because, again, we load both up here. Uh, and um, do we ever use color in in this word? What? What have I done here? Why have I done this? What am I doing? Okay, I don't think we use this anymore. I think this is what we did down here. Sorry, I was looking at the GitHub um, for this project. And um, yeah, I think that's why I used it. At least my quick quick glance at, at the repo for it implied that. Um, so I guess we don't need color in. I know we still use light position. And you can see that, you know. Wait, do we actually use light position? Yeah, we do, okay. So I'm gonna double check I don't use color in anywhere else in here. Uh, current document, yeah. Yeah, no, that is the only spot. And I can see that position's there, so I don't need to actually double check. I know I use it. Awesome. Um, so light position is a vec2. So we'll do set matrix2. You know, I probably should snake case that if the other ones are. I want to just so I know the what the heck I'm looking at. This is not coming from something within my own code. It's co coming from the shader code. All right. Um, and that doesn't seem right. Why did I put a second thing of things in there? Um, right. Next, what we're gonna do is then pass in a vec two, and um. Easy point. Okay, there we go. That's our shaders taken care of. And next, we will do our renderer. And we have a renderable, which we'll call. Um, I didn't think of a name for it. It's a sprite. Ah, uh, UMath. Uh, we need. Shoot. Yoink. Right. Uh, VAC3. Sorry, I think I don't need that anymore either. I think we're doing it here. Oh, I misread that. I was very confused. I'm like, why is color a VEC2? We've done VEC4s previously. Like, you can just go over here and see that, you know, color is a VEC4. I was very, very confused. It's size next, or scale. Um, all right, let's start with a simple cube. Uh, so VEC2, we'll do four by four. So it's an actual, literal, simple cube. Uh, I guess also UMath, VEC. 
Um, and then it's color. And I, what color did I use last time? We'll just use that color again. Okay, cool. I think, yeah, that's all we needed from that, but. Uh, and that is a UMath Vec 4. Eat me, computer. I didn't like this. What am I doing wrong? Uh, what don't you like about this? What do you, no constructor, neuron graphics, variable to variable base, matches the argument types. Argument, uh, matches the argument on the list. Argument types are VEC3, VEC2, VEC4. Oh, uh, duh, uh, and that's shader test. Cool. Sorry. I was looking at the fact that I was highlighting the back three part and not thinking, uh, yeah, things after. Okay. Um, and then we need to actually have, so this is the object we're rendering, um, and render object or target is what I called it earlier, I guess. Um, Right, so then we call up our simple renderer 2D, which we'll call renderer for now. Okay, and then we do our while loop, and it is while main window, no, main window is not closed. Sorry, I just, I remember this one for some reason, because we looked at it earlier in stream. All right, I know we clear the window at the start. Nope main window dot clear I know we update it at the end okay those are the two bits I actually remember I don't remember anything else for this particular part of the function so we go here and we take a look Oh, okay. Literally, okay. So just about everything in there goes bye-bye. Cool. Um, draw, render, targets. Um, so what we're going to do is... renderer dot submit we add it first then we flush it um and we add in the reference so they can get a pointer to the sprite right um and then we flush okay i think that's everything we need for our test Operative word is think, and I'm not entirely sure I'm doing that. So, a moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. Moment of truth. Let's find out if I did this correctly. I didn't. I bet I didn't. I know I didn't. And it didn't work.
All right. Um. Exception thrown. Um. Cool. I'm just curious. I know it's going to crash out. Yeah. Awesome. Um, <sighs> That's a horrifying sign. Okay, give me a second. Today's the 18th? Yes, today is the 18th. So let's take a look at the logs from the 18th. Okay, so we have a syntax error. That's gonna be a shader. Yeah, vertex shader failed to compile. Uh, okay. See, I'm glad we did this thing. So uh, that is our basic dot vert here. Okay, line 11. Uh, expected a semicolon. Syntax error, expected a semicolon. Unexpected semicolon, expecting. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, I think that's what I, I, yeah. Okay. Try that again. Awesome. Uh, all right. Let's see what that error is. Okay. Same file at least. Okay. Uh, same file, but different error. So vertex shader failed to compile error C1503 undefined variable POS. 920. Oh, um. Yeah, that's what was here. So we're replacing it with this. Um. Also, we never defined this. I just realized there's no actual setting for that, despite everything here for it. Um, so we do vert out dot position. I'm actually just gonna be really, yeah. Uh, and then we'll do color before I forget about this and freak out why we don't have the correct color. Um, and we're passing in color from up here. All right, uh, let me close out the error log and let's try that again course um <laughs> i'm gonna go crazy doing this okay um lines 21 and 20 Is that how we do this one? Nope. <laughs> okay, I, I hate shaders. I hate shaders. Okay, so I treat. I feel like just reading this and why I was confused earlier. I think I need to treat this like a type def. <laughs> um. I'm just, I don't know, okay? Just, just don't judge me too much. That's also not what I meant to do. Uh, I meant to do that. Um, 
Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I did. Okay, this is so not gonna work. <laughs> I knew it wouldn't. All right, um, go ahead and close out. <laughs> oh, okay, that actually worked. I'm going to have to rename that. Uh, the issue, however, is vert out no longer exists. It's now blob. Okay. At least, hey, at least it was a fragmentator that aired out that time. Undefined. It's a type death. And I haven't told it what blob is. Duh. Okay, so uh, now that I understand what the heck I'm doing here, as I think I do based on that, um, what are we going to call this? Uh, sprite. It's not always going to be a sprite, though. Um... settings right so we're just gonna cop at all right so this is a type def called settings we'll call this vert out there we go we have to define it here but instead of an out it's an in call of settings and those remain the same and then we just rename this as frag in to keep the naming convention i think i've understood what i'm doing just watch me get another error because it's not gonna work called it um right what did i mess up on this version of it now okay oh okay um right okay um clearly i didn't mess up all right so we'll literally just start at the top of this thing and see how far through it we get um so let's hit play and okay we're setting our <laughs> window size um all right and let's go into here pass the data in we init we don't fail on that so we create the window we don't have an issue there i'm sorry i drove chat we don't have an issue there uh we make that the current context we get a pointer to it set up our vsync set up callback for resizing key callback and the reason by the way earlier i mentioned maybe moving uh the thing at the update about getting um pulling um blanking on the name of the damn thing um So I'm trying to find the thing I was mentioning earlier. Hmm, where is that thing I was mentioning earlier? <laughs> ah. Um, pull events. I said it was an update, and I just went right past it. So this bit we might want to move, and that way we can call these up there instead. Um, but that that's something we can take care of down the road. Right back to what we're doing. So we don't have any errors, so we should get through that stage. Yep. Um. Okay, we set up our input class. Okay, uh, yeah, no, we're just stepping out of that one. Um, okay. We don't have an error there. We would have had that in the error log otherwise. Okay, so we're going to make it past here. We set our color. Uh, did that actually print last time? Yeah, it did. Okay, that goes through. I should have actually known to start there. Uh, we can step out of this one. Um, right. 
And um, we're going to step over, 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 over. All right. Um, cool. Let's step into this one. All right. That seems all to be hunky dory. We're not getting any errors there. We shouldn't, really. Shouldn't get any there or there because these were working previously. Okay. So, um, let's actually just go through these ones. All right. All right. So this is where I'm now going to start being concerned. Okay. That went through fine. That went through fine. And then our, um, Last one. I'm not sure if those are the colors I put in or not. I should check that. I know that's erroring out. Okay. That's not erroring out. It's two buffers we have. The count of sixteen. Okay. Did we ever actually pass the index into that thing? No, it's zero. What? what? Um. Do, 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 do. Uh, what are we looking for actually? We are in vertex array and we're looking to see if we actually passed the index in with the buffer. Um, and that is an add buffer. So, add buffer. Yep, and we're passing the index zero in. Okay. Fine. Uh, that's fine. Um, okay. Hang on, wait. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, yep. <sighs> okay. Uh, yeah, no, we're not going through all of that. <clears throat> okay, that's useful. So, at least we now know 
The issue happens in here. Well, what we're going to do is put a breakpoint there. Go back to main. Make sure that breakpoint's gone. And just do that one more time. Okay. All right, that's a problem. Our index buffer is null. Right, okay. So, uh, renderable is a 2D renderable base. Okay, so if I be, oh, that's returning um, no good here. So renderable 2D, renderable 2D. Um, all right, why are you null? You shouldn't be. Okay, that's right. Well, what the shit is going on? Okay, so long as the destructors aren't being called, I'm happy. All right, what the hell is clearing you? Hmm. Okay. You're being cleared. At least that's what I'm seeing. Okay. We can't clear it in there, really. Uh, okay, so. K. 
Okay, let me try this a different way. I don't know why I'm thinking, because I'm never iterating through anything. I can't tell where I'm at. So instead, what we're gonna do is a while loop. Also, because we wanna change the size of this thing anyway as we're working through it, iterating makes no sense. Uh, I just realized that. Uh, we're gonna do empty, which is, I don't think this will help, but. to see where things are breaking down. Okay, so it's gonna be in the same spot as before. Like I said, that wouldn't make much of a difference. Um, okay, even if these numbers are wrong, it should still have something, right? Maybe it needs to, I don't know. This makes no sense, but I'm gonna just. <laughs> I literally have no idea why it's getting cleared. Okay, yeah, no. Clearly not the reason why that's getting cleared. That would, shouldn't have an effect, but not having worked with OpenGL, I'm gonna take a stab at anything. Um, right, um. We don't need the second declaration of public, do we? Actually, hang on, wait. Why are my attributes public? That should be private. Okay, I mean, that's not gonna be causing this issue that I'm slowly working my way th through things for. Buffer, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, those need to be const. Okay. Rotex buffer it is now. All right. Um, one. Ray buffer, yep. Yep, yep. Yep. Yep, that's what data type is. We're just drawing it. That should be the same as above. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, 
So I'm trying to get the color to come back there. Yep, yep. Okay. All right. Um. Passing in vertices. Oh, that should be colors. The numbers don't line up, it's not colors. Okay, that wasn't the issue apparently. I actually think this is wrong. I think this should be three comma three times four. I think I just wrote them in backwards. There we go. Except for nothing is happening. Okay. You know what? We got to step forward. Cool. Um, right. Um, that is actually concerning. It's doing something. Not much of anything. I'm stuck at 80, whatever. Um, Sorry, whatever was to the thing, down to the unit of measurements for megabytes. Um, <laughs> 80 whatevers. Yeah, no, that's not how I meant that. Uh, right. Um, oh, okay. So, oh, I don't need to check that. That's a thing I was, yeah, no, we started zero. We're passing in zero. So we know we started zero. All right. It's not drawing anything at all, so that's not going to be in the indices. So that's not the thing I was commenting on earlier. Um, just want to try zero instead of null pointer. Okay, the answer to that is, well, that wasn't the problem or the solution. Um. Sorry, I'm just going through my notes to see if I missed something obvious. Um,
What is this returning? Um, you know what? I just want to look this one up again. Uh, probably have a tab for it open already. Wait, was that actually the right tab? No, it wasn't. Okay, that was for a different uh, thing. Uh, right, so that should be index. Size, which is our count type. All right, so this is a pointer. This should be null pointer. So, all right, so it's type uh, normalized. Okay, uh, apparently this should either be GL true or GL false. And since we're not normalizing anything, we'll just go with GL false. By the way, um, yoink. That's the bit I was just reading from. Okay, go ahead and again, pop that into the chat for people watching or who are watching the VOD. Or, sorry, I meant to say who are watching live or who are watching the VOD. Um, okay. So, let me just get rid of this window. Um, let's just try it, see if that affects anything. Nope. Cool. Um. Hmm. Right, I just want to do something really quickly. What? Okay. Good, so long as that window's showing up this way, at least I haven't screwed up that part of the code, sorry. Um, right, um, I did screw something up clearly, otherwise this would be working. We'd have a square on the screen of that weird indeterminate color I gave it earlier. All right, um, how did you freak out at me with the thing just not being used even. Okay. Why did you freak out at me? What the? F what? I swear, when I commented out these two lines, I just got the read none error earlier. What is happening? All right. Uh, let's try that again.
Sorry, looking around the wire and the mic still it's kind of annoying. <laughs> I don't like when it's not in the right color. It just makes me paranoid I did something wrong. There we go, okay. Because now I'm paranoid I did something wrong. Okay. Well, I mean, I've done something wrong either way, but not that. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, I got confused by that it wasn't float, and I had to look up to see what we were actually in. I was thinking I was in the um, vertex buffer, not the index buffer. Sorry, going through the open deal documentation to figure out what I've done wrong here. So I feel like I skipped something here. Wait, God damn it. what is the command I'm looking for? Hmm. 
just to be really paranoid. Okay, that's less concerning. That is just extremely slow, but okay. We can optimize later. Um, right. Now I just need to work out why it's not actually showing anything. Um... So, I was freaking out there. Let's resolve that one. It's not drawing anything. Just... That's position. What position did we use earlier? Four, three, zero. Four, three, and zero. Okay, let's just. Okay. Let's go back to the one I think it might be on. I don't know why I think that might matter. And it doesn't, clearly. Okay, um... Let me get that document from earlier open again. Uh, drawing triangles, triangles, triangles. We're doing square, so we're gonna do four for that overlap uh, and that order. Um, so, boink. Yep. All right, so, that's that one. Yep, that's the same. related to Vulcan only. That doesn't help me. Uh, they've done their fragment and vertex shader differently. Oh. 
Okay. So that's not a good one for this. Uh, this is on different list types or container types in JLSW. This is someone asking about other types of containers. All right, let's take a look at uh, graphics.gl.low. Uh, yep. Yep. <laughs> you know the hilarious part? I forgot this is why I named Bob a blob, but not Bob. Briefly is um in the graphics load GLL hang on, I'll just bring it over. Um They called it Blob 2 as well. Like or I called it as well because they were original, but yeah, that, that's uh this is for version one point five. Uh, cube map, shader programs, frame buffer objects, which we'll talk about later. Render buffer objects. None of that's relevant because we didn't do that. Um, okay. Nope. Not relevant. More on that type. Oh, I've already. If I had like the same thing open three times in a row, like literally. The a pattern of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Like, I think that's what I just went through. Um, oh, here's a bit I try. I wanted to read earlier. <laughs> Completely unrelated. <sighs> Me reading up on direct text. Twitter, Google. Uh, how to degree CPU usage when using uh, GeoDraw arrays. We're not there yet. Buffer data. Enum list. I'm closing that one. Hey, I really don't know what would cause this one. Okay, so it is passing in the correct position. No error messages from our shaders or anywhere else. Probably should have checked that earlier, to be fair. <laughs> I would actually have been really kind of upset had they been in there at that point, because, like, yeah. Um, all right. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm.
Sorry, I'm checking my notes on just everything, and I'm not seeing what I might have messed up. Um, you know, I said I made a paranoid. I copied and pasted the names. That's right there in my notes. Um, I really am either not seeing something so very painfully obvious, and I'm sorry I'm being really pedantic about going through this. Okay. We haven't had any bind fails, so not making any changes there. Um, I'm going to have a cheeky smoke. Hey, hey, um... I have a first-person tutorial series. It's the survival series. It's in first-person. Uh, so while I have my cheeky smoke, I am going to turn my camera off. By the way, uh, Kino, welcome in. How are you doing today, man? Are you talking about a different type of first-person game? Are you talking about building a first-person game in what I'm working on currently? Um, hmm, okay, um, bu 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 bum. Let's the buffers, yep, okay, um, Enable vertex attribute library at index. Um, uh, vertex attribute po attribute pointer or attrib pointer technically at index buffer count. Okay, those are all right. I don't see where I've cocked this up. Okay, let's go to our fragment shader. Okay, that's right.
Welcome in, uh, Scream. How are you doing today? Sorry, I'll turn my camera back on in a moment. Ah, so you want to make a replicated game, then you're going to need to wait till I do the replicated tutorials in Unreal 5. I'm going to be prepping them on Friday nights. In fact, in a little bit, while I'm struggling to figure out where I've screwed this code up, I can put it up to show you what it will look like, roughly. I'm still in the middle of prepping it. I'm going to have to re-prep it, because I started prepping it in... Um, uh, bu bu bum, early access version of 5. Um, this is purely abstracted. Yep. We're inheriting. We're not running into any issues. Cool. Let's go into here. Both are marked as having overrides for that, like they should be. Um, we can't do a reference with a vector, apparently. I thought you could. I swear I've done it before, but okay. Uh, okay, that looks right to me. Okay, we push it back. We empty the queue. Or, sorry, we don't empty the queue. We check if the queue is empty. Yeah. Uh, okay. And that's why we can't use an if statement by or a for loop, by the way, because we're iterating, we're ep ep updating the thing as we're iterating through it. Um, yes, I'll be starting the series for it. It'll be a few months probably before it's ready because I have a lot of videos to edit still. I'm like 30 videos behind in my editing. I'm always 30 videos behind in my editing. Um, okay, let's put a breakpoint here. And I'm just going to step over it because I want to see. All right, so we are getting the correct values. All right. Um, uh, actually, shit. Let's hit play again. Part of my language. Uh, let's step over that. Step over that. Um, yep, six is what we're expecting to see. Okay. Uh, we don't need that breakpoint anymore. Did I cock up in this? Uh, likely when I finish live, I'm gonna have lunch or yeah, I'm gonna have dinner or lunch because I've not eaten since seven this morning, um, and it's now almost five. Um, but if you join the Discord, link in the description below. Oh, I can turn my camera back on. Uh, link in the description below. I can help you when I'm back from my food. Okay, um... Alright, let's check this part again, because... Yeah. By the way, there is an error I have intentionally left in, and it is in here. It's why I keep avoiding scrolling up, because I don't want people to see the error until I've talked about it. It's not the error we're currently experiencing, which is what is driving me up the wall. Um... Huh.
All right, screw it. I'm actually going to fix the intentional error just to see if that actually is causing this. It shouldn't. Oh, huh. Okay. Is this the error I meant to put in instead? That's the error I meant. Oh my god. I intentionally put in an error to show this error. And I got the error wrong. Oh. Seriously. I was avoiding that one spot because I know I put an error there intentionally to show this and I put the wrong error in and well, nothing was loading. Alright. So, if you have that happen, you can see one of the co how the coloring works and how each verti vertice is getting a different color. Alright, uh, I'm not going to talk about that error now. You, Yeah. That's no point to. Alright. There we go. Our basic 2D renderer is rendering our object. Except for it doesn't look like the right size to me. Give me a second. What size did I actually make this thing? Oh yeah, no, I didn't use the right size intentionally because I wanted to have a, a simple square. Um, uh, it was eight and three is what I used last time. Okay. Oh my god, I could have just used that thing earlier, by the way, to have worked out what numbers I was looking for for the other thing instead of using uh, the incorrect, or not incorrect, but incompatible version to translate over. There we go. Okay, so that's one sprite object rendered. What I want to do now is to make sure... Um... Okay, I will uh, message you on the server once I'm back from stuff. Um, I want to make sure that I can render more than one object. So we're going to add three objects, or two more in. Um, in fact, actually, what I'm going to do is just name the Sprite 00. Uh, sprite 00. Uh, we're going to copy this, and we're going to do uh, 0, 1, 0, 2. And then what we're going to do is... Um, we'll leave the size the same. We'll do different colors for each of these. Uh, so that should be a reddish color, I think. Um, R, G, sorry, I hit something by accident. I didn't mean to hit. R, G, so let's do this as 0, 0.0. Let's do this as, uh, R, G, B. As a bluish sort of shade um, and uh, these positions need to be changed so um, what I'll do is zero uh, zero so it'll be the bottom left corner and then um, I think it's nine I want and eight to get the sort of step shape I'm looking for and then we're going to copy this line and just change out the values for uh, the uh, ones we're passing in. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, you know what? We're just gonna do this in a very simple way for me, just so I know what colors things are. This one is gonna be red. I'm pretty sure that's what we had earlier. Was that one? Okay. Yeah. There we go. Um. Right, so our other one is not showing up. Um, let's just set this to five. Just make sure I didn't put it off the screen. There we go. Uh, I did put it too far up, so it should have been probably six. I probably meant to double it, not triple it. Um, okay, yep, there we go. There is that effect I'm looking for. And hey, you can see kind of interestingly enough, the lighting effect is coming across. So now... Uh, the lighting effect is doing weirdness, um, and I don't know why. I can't figure it out. I am looking into that one, because um, this is the same lighting effect we were getting last time when we were just directly hand-drawing these onto the thing instead of using a shader. Um, right. 
so that actually takes us through one, two, three, and four on the list of things to do. Um, I am gonna do one other thing, and I'm gonna just set it back up. I'm not gonna try to fix it. That's the last thing, number five. I, I, let me just get it back to, uh, bum. let me just, yeah, we're gonna go here. We're gonna do this above the shader. Um, track mouse test. And so we're gonna declare two doubles and we're gonna do input dot get mouse position. And we're gonna store these in X and Y. Um, right, then we're gonna do shader test. So we're gonna get our shader and we're gonna set uh, uniform matrix two, it's a two D vector X and Y. Um, and this will be, and again, I'm gonna be extra paranoid. Um, in our frag shader, that's what I'm looking for. It's our light position from our fragment shader. And we're gonna do a vec two. And we're going to cast to a float. And the first value will be uh, X from our mouse position. And um, should be uh, a 16, nine aspect ratio. So what we're gonna do is 16 of the nine and that would be our um, width. Okay, uh, we got that one in. Uh, also that should be yeah, vec two. And then we're gonna cast to another float. Um, okay, and this is gonna be um, Y times, um, what did I say, 16.9 divided by height. Um, okay go so yeah yeah something is off with our mouse tracking thingy there our y axis is inverse and our left and right axes are uh, x axis is good does have a little bit of lag. Well, oh, that's kind of, yeah, I kind of like how that goes. Um, right. So let me just uh, close this out. Okay, we might actually solve number five as well. Um, you know what? I'm just curious what happens if we do negative Y. Okay, that made the problem much worse, it looks like. Um, okay. I'm just really curious what happens if I wrap this like that and do negative really quickly. Okay. All right, that clearly was not the right solution for that part. Um, If it's reverse, then we want to, I'm not sure if we want to add nine or take away nine. There we go. So we wanted to take away nine. Okay. Well, we solved whatever the issue was from last time. We 
I like how those two line up. Oh, they just line up too. There we go. So we're now able to track the mouse position. Right. Um, cool. I'm honestly confused by what I did wrong last time. Okay, so I know I have the last one in here, and I was trying to solve it. Um, you know, I can think I see the issue already from that copy job I just did. Let's just paste what I copied uh, down here. Uh, so shader test set uniform matrix. This is before I renamed. Don't ask why I renamed. I just got really confused on what was in what and decided that anything not in my code is going to be snake case for a bit. Um, Cause I had W and H there last time and I did the replacement last time. We, you know what? I'm just really, Son of a, I see the issue. I'm pretty sure what I'm about to do should still work actually. As long as it's in a 16 by nine aspect ratio. Yeah, I think what was happening and why I thought it wasn't working was I had uh, this instead. And of course, this clearly isn't going to work. I mean, it's gonna work, but not the way I want it to. Yeah. That was what was going on. Now, what I want to do is I want to undo all of what I've just did. And now I want to go back in here and I wanna test something. So we're good here, right? And I go to full screen and then suddenly it's off. So what I do want to do is I do want to put that back in. And I wanna hit play. And there we are, we're in the right spot again. And I'm gonna go full screen and notice we're still in the correct spot, okay. Now, what I want to do, just because I, I just want to do this version of it really quickly. Uh, but we will switch these out to be the correct values. Okay, there we go. Uh, do that. Uh, we'll also replicate that part of it. That part. And... Uh, that part. Okay. Why wasn't it? Okay. Because before I had, I probably just have the H and W backwards. Um, all right, cool. That actually uh, is, there used to be a way to do that. But okay, fine, I see how it is. I'll do it that way. Um, okay, well that sets our mouse, our tracking our mouse up. Um, yeah. I uh, then want to do one final thing. Just pop these open and make sure that we have no random errors we haven't been seeing. Okay, all those seem to be correct. Lovely. Um. Right, uh, I think it's Trello time then. So I'm just gonna head over to the Trello account really quickly. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just making some quick updates. Um,
And then, sorry, I just realized I skipped some stuff in my notes on, uh, on Trello. Give me one second and I'll be fully back. I forgot to put labels on things, for example. I'm just gonna quickly toss all the labels on. But that is the first, literally, that is the first step of our of our renderer being done. Um, we didn't work on the 3D renderer, it was a 2D renderer we worked on. Um, all right, that goes there for now. And I need to add some attachments really quickly to um, our renderer um, thing. Okay. So let's bring Trello over, also with all the tutorial stuff and Twitter, um, and all the Stack Overflow stuffs and all the random things being discussed. So um, yeah, uh, we have the 2D renderer now in progress. Um, why is Matrixy over here? I think Matrixy is actually yeah here. Um, also, this needs a label to task. Um, This is also not an epic, this is a task. Oh, I will deal with removing the label later. Like, oh, there we go. Okay. Um, actually, no, this is an epic. I just have this name poorly. This actually should be graphic, uh, graphics engine, which includes the renderer. Um, so let's just quickly add that so I don't make these mistakes again. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, there we go. Um, Okay, there we go. All right, so yeah, that brings us through all five of the pieces I wanted to work on. Apparently the mouse one was actually much simpler than I thought. I had reversed numbers, that's all. Um, but yeah, let me just make a note that uh, this is for the 16-9 aspect ratio. Um, we might want to, to do consider uh, polymorphic approach to uh, switching aspect ratios. Retro games. Um, all right, so that takes us through that. And before we finish up today, just really quickly, because I said I'd show it. Um, so, um, Kino uh, or uh, uh, Spawn X, I guess. Sorry, I'm trying to find where you said your name. Um, just to show you, I think it's this one is the one that uh, we're gonna use as the example. What it looks like right now in terms of just, it's a really simple tutorial. Like I'm not gonna go into all the environmental crap that goes into it, into, or all the design crap that goes into it. I'm just gonna go into the play crap. Um, it's gonna take a moment for Unreal to load. To be fair, that question is a good question. Um, sorry, it's opening the other window. So just to give you an idea of what it looks like, let me just make sure I'm set up for multiplayer. I am. <laughs> Seriously? Uh, right. There we go. Let's just do uh, that. Okay. Uh, so this is the server. We The jump animations stink right now. Um, also, yeah, there is a bit of weirdness with this stuff, but yeah. So yeah, you can see the server. I feel like that camera is more twisted than I remember it being. All right. 
You can see the server reloading. Let's just fire off two rounds. Let's then reload. Let's fire off two rounds from here. And let's reload. And notice you can see the reload animations. I'm going to fire off six rounds. And just make sure everything is working. We're going to do two rounds from here. And we're going to reload. And we're going to reload here as well. Uh, I've not received a pick from you, Sam, since we talked right before the migraine stuff, or right during the migraine stuff. Uh, but I'll take another look today just in case I miss something. And then, of course, we can kill people. Um, yeah. So right now you have a kill cam. Uh, I meant to clear out more of the HUD, but I failed to. We, Because we can't teabag yet. So we'll just do this instead. You notice he's dancing, by the way. Like, uh, hang on. Can I? Yeah, I can. See? He's dancing. But we'll also do the loading in of the map, the server transfer. This will be using the listen server approach. Um, and the, um, containment area, the damage zone, whatever you want to call it. Like the, you better be in this area or you're going to take damage and eventually die out there thing. Oh crap, I'm out of ammo. Whoops. We. So yeah, this is what the uh, replicated multiplayer will look like. Um, of course, it'll be in C++, not in Blueprint. That is a Blueprint version. I'll be making a C++ version at some point down the line in one of the Friday streams, probably starting this Friday. Um, all right, that said, we have been going for five hours. Um, I'm trying to keep this between four to six. So this is, we got through all the goals I wanted to get through for today. So this feels like the... Um, correct place to pause for now um and we will return on monday with a, another tutorial in the survival series what tutorial are we up to um i honestly don't know what last video i released i think it was a lightning one uh, ba -ba an easy way for me to tell and I'm just trying to figure out what the folder is uh, ba -ba -bum. where the crud is it there it is uh, ba -ba 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 -bum. so yeah we did lightning one last week or week before last uh, lightning two will be out this week which means patreon members are gonna get um, Custom Volumetric Clouds Part 1 this upcoming week at some point, most likely tomorrow, um, and probably get Custom Volumetrics 2 as well. Uh, so yeah, so you can see that I've actually recorded all these. Like These are over a year old, some of these recordings. <laughs> That's from uh, one of the live streams, actually. Um, here's why there's uh, files in here that are newer. Then when I say newer... Like, here's the swimming system already recorded. Um, but when I say newer, it's because of those. It's just I'm re-recording little bits from uh, for these where I don't like the sound, like like that. And so I have it saved to output here. That's all those are. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, they'll get that. I also plan on giving them... Oh, uh, that's the wrong thing. I think it's in here. Nope. Ah, yes. So, uh, they have that video. I think they haven't don't have that one yet. So, uh, yeah, they'll be getting that video. If I can figure out where the raw files for them are, instead of the edited files. 
That would be useful. Uh, RTS remaster. Why is there a folder? Oh, it's the old assets. Uh, okay, these are the assets. There we go. So yeah, you can see I've recorded up to section, well, part of section three in the new RTS series. But yeah, they sh uh, Patreon members should be getting uh, this video this week. And hopefully the other two. This one actually might become two in and of itself. Um, so yeah, if you want early access to the videos, you want to be here when the tutorials come out, all those fun things, there are things you can do to make sure you're aware. First, you can help the channel out just by hitting the like button below. Second, if you want to be here when the tutorials come out, you want to know when they're released, you want to know when there are live streams, you want to be involved in community events or get updates on when videos are coming out if there's a change in schedule then make sure to hit the subscribe icon and the notify bell. That way you're aware. Join our Discord. It is a public Discord. Anyone who's interested in games, programming, 3D art, any side of it, even if they don't actively take a part in doing it, but enjoy learning about it, feel free to invite them. Public server, server for a reason. Community, community public server for a reason. Um, we do announcements there as well. And if you want to take your support a bit further, you want to get access to the project files for the UE4 and UE5 tutorials, then consider becoming a Patreon sponsor. Patreon sponsors on top of that get early access to these videos that I've been pointing out. So all of that said, thank you all for being here. Sam, thank you for being here. I'll double check the thing you said. Uh, Chica, thank you much for being here, man. Everyone else as well. Sorry if I'm not shouting out everyone's names. Um, you know, I will, uh, Scream, if you're still here, sorry, I missed your response to me asking how you were earlier. Uh, I'm doing good. I'm a bit tired, but I'm doing good. Thank you much for asking. Um, so yeah, uh, that said, I will see you guys either in the next tutorial or, um, that should not say starting soon. Um, or as things progress and as we um it's also the wrong thing i meant to click i meant to remove the goals there we go um sorry i'm trying to fix something and it's driving me up the wall <laughs> that is not what I wanted to do. Oh my god. Okay, that is what I was trying to do. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want to be here for that, if you yeah, if you want to be here for that, subscribe, like, Discord, Patreon options. All support the channel. Uh, I clearly lost track of where I was in my outro, by the way. Thus, the weirdness we're getting at this. Uh, thank you for reminding me of the next line. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next tutorial, the next live stream, or on Discord. And as always, um, I hope that you have a wonderful day.